Hey guys, welcome to this session by IntelliPad. So in this session, we'll be learning about SAS comprehensively. So SAS is also called Statistical Analysis System and it is widely used in the field of data science. Also guys, before moving on with this session, please subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our upcoming videos. Now let's take a quick glance at the agenda. So we'll start off with what is SAS and understand where exactly it is used. Moving on, we'll be looking into SAS applications. And after that, we'll be looking into the program structure used in SAS. And finally, we'll be doing a demo in SAS as well so that you can understand the concepts better. Also guys, if you're looking for an end-to-end -end SAS for data science course, we at IntelliPad provide you that and you can check those details in the description. Now let's begin with this session. So what is SAS? It is an analytical tool. So SAS basically stands for Statistical Analysis System. And with the help of SAS, we can perform a variety of analytical operations like time series analysis, predictive modeling, and data management. SAS is also a visualization tool. With the help of SAS, we can create beautiful graphs and also build stunning dashboards to represent or analyze data. So now that we've understood what exactly is SAS, let's go ahead and look at some of its applications. SAS has wide applications when it comes to the finance sector. It is used in calculating credit risk on loans given by banks, credit unions, and other fintech companies. SAS can also be used for fraud prevention by continually monitoring transactions and applying behavioral analytics, which enables real-time decision-making. Now, SAS is used in the healthcare sector to identify potential issues before they become a reality by analyzing diverse data sources to predict and medically investigate patient safety signals. It is also used to gain a more comprehensive view of patient care across a variety of conditions and procedures by analyzing huge volumes of structured and unstructured clinical data. SAS is also used in the automotive industry for tasks such as warranty claims analytics and service parts optimization. Now we'll go ahead and look at the SAS programming structure. So any SAS program basically comprises of these two parts data step and proc step. The data step is used to create and manage data while proc step is used to implement different procedures for analyzing and visualizing the data. Right, well head on to the demo part now and we'll be using the SAS University Edition to implement a demo. So let's go ahead and open up a SAS University Edition. Right, so I'll be using the data step to create my data set which will be student so this is the keyword over here, data with which we can create our data set. And I've given the name of the data set to be student. And we need to end every statement with a semicolon. Right now I'll go ahead and input some of the columns for the data set. So I'll say a student has a name and he has marks in three subjects. So let's say subject one, subject two and subject three. And the student also has a gender. So these are the columns for the student table. Now I'll uh, go ahead and uh, give the values for this data set. So I'll be using the data lines keyword. Now I'll give the values. So let's say the first student is Sam and these are his marks. And his gender is male. The next student is Anne and her marks are these. And her gender is female. The next in line is Julia who scores 90 in first subject and 12 and 12 in the next subject a gender is female the next student is let's say bob who scores 50 respectively in all of the three subjects and his gender is male and next we have jeff who scores let's say 78 in first subject 34 in second subject and one in the third subject and his gender is male the final student is Matt, who scores, let's say, 90 in first subject, one in second subject, and 50 in third subject, and his gender is male. Now we'll go ahead and give a semicolon so that we can signify that these are just the values which are supposed to be included in the data set. And then we'll go ahead and run this. So let's do that. Now, what we see over here is we just get the marks in the three subjects. But these two columns we have dot size, there are no values for this. Right? So the name column and the gender column, we have just dots. And why is that happening? That is because we have not specifically told SAS that these two columns are of character type. So we need to 
follow the name of the column by dollar symbol to tell SAS that these are actually character columns. Right. Now let us run this and let's have a look at the result. Right. So now we see that we get the values in the name and gender column as well. Right. So um, this was a data step with which we were able to create the student data set. Now we'll go ahead and uh, implement the proc step. So the first proc step or the first procedure will be the print procedure with which we'll be printing the data set. So I'll say proc print data is equal to student and then I'll run this right. So this is our data set which we have printed with the proc step. Now uh, we'll go ahead and look at proc SQL. So proc SQL basically enables us to implement SQL like commands in SAS. So let's say I would want to have a look at uh, all of the columns and rows of the data set and I'll be using the select star command from SQL. So I'll just type out select star from student and I'll say quit. Right. So this command which you see over here, select star from student. This uh, enables us to select all of the rows and columns from this data set. Let's go ahead and run this and we get the same result. So we get the entire table comprising of all the columns and all the rows. Now what we'll do is we'll use proc SQL to find out maximum marks, minimum marks and average marks in all of the three subjects. So let's do that. So I'll say select max of sub one as highest underscore sub one max of sub two as highest underscore sub two and max of sub three as highest underscore sub three then we'll say from student that is we are selecting the maximum marks from subject one subject two and subject three from the student table and we are naming those columns as highest sub one highest sub two highest sub three so let's go ahead and execute this right so the highest marks scored by any student in subject one is 90 and the highest marks scored by any student in subject two is 78 and in subject three it is 89 now similarly we'll go ahead and calculate the minimum mark scored by a student so i'll say minimum of sub 1 and i'll change the column name to be lowest of sub 1 again minimum of sub 2 as uh, lowest of sub 2 and minimum of sub 3 as lowest underscore sub 3 from student Again, let's run this. Right, so the lowest marks in subject one is 34, and in subject two and subject three is one. Now let's calculate the average marks. So I'll change this and say select mean of sub one as uh, average underscore sub one, mean of sub two as. Uh, average underscore sub 2 and mean of sub 3 as average underscore sub 3 from student. Let's run this now. Right, so the average score in subject 1 is 68, average score in subject 2 is 34 and average score in subject 3 is 35. Now what we'll do is uh, we'll uh, go ahead and implement uh, some other sql statement now what i want to do is i want to see all of uh, those rows separated by male and female students so i'll individually do that so what i'll do is select star from student where gender is equal to male let me run this. So now I have the data set which comprises of only the male students, right? So I have four male students over here. 
Similarly, if I just want the female students from the entire data set, I'll change the gender to be female. So let me run this now. This is our data set where we only have female students and we have two female students over here. Right. Now uh, we'll go ahead and find out the total of all of the three subjects. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So I'll say select star and I'll add a new column which will be sub one plus sub two plus sub three that is i'm adding the marks of all of these three subjects and i'm creating a new column and i'll name that column as total and i need this from the student data set right let's run this now so we have a new data set over here which comprises of one extra column which gives us the total in all of these three subjects and with this, we can find out that Sam is the topper of the class. Right. So uh, this was an implementation of PROC SQL. Now we'll go ahead and create a new program where we'll understand looping in SAS and we'll work with the do index loop. So uh, for this, we'll be uh, creating a factorial program. So a factorial is where you're basically trying to multiply one particular integer with all of the integers below it. So let's say if we would want to find out 5 factorial, then we'll multiply 5 with 4, 3, 2 and 1 and the result would be 120. That is 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 will be 120. So let's go ahead and create a factorial program where uh, we'll get the factorials for the first 10 numbers. Now I'll use the data step and uh, create a new data set. I'll name this BA. I'll create a new variable, name it as factorial and give the value of one. Now I'll use the do index loop and I'll type out do i is equal to one to 10. That is this loop starts from one and goes till 10. And inside the loop, what we're going to do is we'll multiply factorial with the value of i, right? So initially the value of factorial is 1. So 1 into 1 is 1. Then after the incrementation, value of i becomes 2. So it becomes 2 into 1. Then again after incrementation, value of i becomes 3. Then it will become 1 into 2 into 3. Then after again an incrementation, it is 4. So it will be 1 into 2 into 3 into 4. And we'll output all of those steps. Right? And then finally we'll end the loop. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, run this. This actually needs to be i over here, not 1. So let's run this now. Right, so we get our factorial data set over here. So 1 factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 2, 3 factorial, that is 3 into 2 into 1 is 6. 4 factorial, which is 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 is 24. And that is how we get the entire factorial table for the first 10 members. And this was an implementation of do index loop in SAS. Now let's head on and import a new data set into SAS and perform some sort of visualization on it. So I need to upload a file. So I'll be uh, selecting the empty cars data set. I'll upload this. Now I need to import this. So let me go ahead and do that. Let me select the file that I've just imported. So I'll open this. Now over here, I get the code to import this file. So let me go ahead and copy all of this. And I'll open a new program. And I'll paste this over here. So this is the path where my file is stored. And this is the type of the file. And over here, I'll give the name for the file. So now I'll change import to car because that is what I want the name of the data set to be. Let me go ahead and run this. So we have successfully imported the data set. Now let me use the proc step to have a look at the data set. So I'll see proc print data is equal to work dot car because this data set is stored in the work folder. Let me run this now. So this is a data set. 
where we have columns such as MPG, the number of cylinders, displacement, horsepower, DRAT, weight, QSEC, VS. It basically stands for the type of the engine, either V-shaped or straight. Then we have the type of transmission, either automatic or manual. Then we have the number of gears and carburetors. All right. Now, since we have the data set with us, what we'll do is so uh, we'll go ahead and do some visualization with the help of SGPlot procedure. So I'll say proc SGPlot and I'll give the data set which is work dot car. And let's say I'll create a scatter plot. And the scatter plot will give me the distribution between MPG of the car and horsepower of the car. So for this, the command is scatter x is equal to MPG. That is, MPG is mapped onto the x column and y is equal to HP. That is, HP is mapped onto the y column. Now let me go ahead and run this. Right, so we get our graph over here and this is a scatter plot. And what we basically understand from this graph is there is an inverse relationship between these two variables. That is, as MPG increases, horsepower decreases. And this was an implementation of SGPlot and SAS. Okay guys, a quick info. If you are looking for an end-to-end -end training in SAS for data science, we at IntelliPad provide you that course and you can check those details in the description. Now let's continue with this session. All right. Now the libraries, let me tell you that uh, library, these are the libraries. And this is nothing but the reference where you store your data sets. Okay. So if I, uh, I have shown you that these are the default libraries which are created into the system. And as soon as you clicked on SAS help, so the libraries, the libraries which are created, you are able to see them. Uh, by default but in future suppose that if you want to create any library and you want to store some data in it definitely you can do it so let's read why we need library and what is the significance of library in SAS. so they have given an example here that ramu is a, a young fellow he stores all his photos in his home computer under his my picture folder as he has following folder okay that he has created various folders under ramu or my picture folder, right? Graduation, home, relatives, Wuji trip, college year one, college year two, college year three, and college year four. So graduation, home, relative. So these are the various folders which he has created. And you know, for various occasions, he stores pictures in the separate folder. So why does he arrange these photos in this manner? What is the use of grouping them in this way? people can understand easily that yes it would be easier for him to search right that when whenever suppose that he need a picture from woody trip he can directly go to the woody trip folder and pick that picture out all right so arranging photos thematically reduces uh, you know the time or when you are going to search those photos in the future but had it been the scenario you store all the pictures into one folder right Suppose that I have put a, I have created a folder called Ramu and inside of this folder I'm just going to put every picture whenever I go and click with my camera I put that picture in the same folder. So you will not be able to figure out that which picture belongs to which occasion, right? Which picture belongs to the booty trip, which picture belongs to your college graduation, which picture belongs to your college year 4, right? So to not to put get into this situation, it's better to create a particular hierarchy or a folder wherein you can store your pictures as it is the same for you you have libraries option over there to create related you know you can create a number of libraries in SAS and you can store you know that type of data into that only right so if you want I can store I can create a library here with the health care domain and I will store all the healthcare data into that I can store, I can create a pharma library and I can store all the pharma data sets into that. I can create medicine library and I can, uh, uh, you know, save on the list of medicines and details about the medicines in the, into that data set or into that particular library. So it's up to you that how you want to arrange your data sets. 
you can create n number of libraries into the sample library. But again, the processing and the storage of these libraries will depend on the system where your SAS is installed, right? So let us suppose in case you have, uh, you know, very less li uh, memory in your system, but you are storing a lot of data, then definitely the performance of the, your system will hit. So it's better to look at the uh, memory space in your system and then store the data into these libraries. Because ultimately, whether SAS tool is very fast, but it has a limitation. If there is a limitation in your, in your system where the SAS system is installed, right? So it will work accordingly as your system performs. So keeping that in mind, you can store data. All right. So again, it's telling you about that there are uh, by default libraries, SAS help, SAS user and work which you get uh, on your system. But let me tell you an important point, an important question, which we, which normally being asked in your interviews, that uh, we have a work library, we have SAS help library, we have SAS user library. So basically, uh, when you open all these three libraries, one by one, uh, whenever you want, right, you do not get any data set in the work library. You do get something in the SAS user library, and you get a lot of database, data sets into SAS help library. So uh, my uh, behind showing all these uh, libraries, my main motto is, uh, see, you might have worked with SQL Server temporary tables as well. So what basically happens, if you do not mention anything in your data set, that by default goes to the work library and gets saved to work library. And until unless you will not put that into any permanent library, so permanent library and temporary library. Let me first of all tell you that which library is permanent and which is temporary. So work library is called temporary library, right? And SAS help and SAS user and any library like Satya here or these maps or whatever library you are going to create will be the permanent library. So now how it makes a difference, uh, the library, whether it is a permanent or temporary, so uh, anything which you will save in the work library will be temporary, right? When I say temporary, it means as, as soon as you are going to close the SAS environment, that data set will be vanished. You will not be able to recover that again, right? So and, and other thing, suppose that you have created a data set and uh, you have not mentioned any other library, so it will by default go to save, uh, go and save it into, save that into work library. But if you want to save that into any other library, then you will have to mention the library name. I, I will show that how to mention library name before data set. But right now, this is a uh, maximum or I would say important thing to know that type of libraries in SAS are temporary and permanent. Work library is temporary library, whereas SAS help SAS user or SAS defined permanent libraries and everything else, whatever you create is the user defined permanent library. And how this is going to, you know, this is matters to you. But if you're working with live data sets or, uh, you know, creating programs, it will uh, automatically be, you know, it will be automatically understood to you that how this is going to make a sense or make a difference for you. But in a one-liner, just let's move move before that a library is nothing but the collection of data sets or a reference to the location where you save your data sets. All right. So uh, that's all, and let's move to the next page now. So as soon as you launch SAS, you can see these menus we have already gone through. All right. Now it says, what is a SAS program? So SAS program, I told you that you are going to write your SAS programs into SAS window, which is editor window. Okay. So it says a SAS program is a sequence of steps that the user submits for execution. Data steps are used to create SAS data sets. So data set data steps are used to create data set. I'll show you that what is data step. And then you have proc step. Proc step is to process data set. When I say process, it could be that you are sorting that. 
It could be that you are going to find out a report out of that data set. It is possible that you are going to you know summarize that uh, data set. So there are n number of manipulations which you can make with that data. And if you want to see the output in output window, then you use proc, proc steps. So basically a SAS program has two steps or two parts. First one is data and another is steps. Will we know uh, when we will be uh, writing a SAS program? I'll tell you that how to write a program uh, in a couple of minutes and then we, you can see that uh, how uh, we distinguish these both parts whether it is a data part or data steps or it is a proc step. Now keywords, statements, step and program. So basically this is a hierarchy that we have keywords, we combine these, those keywords, then we make statements and then we you know, work with a lot of statements, we create steps. Steps means whether it's proc step or data step. And the combination of proc step or data step makes a SAS program. All right. Now, example of keyword. So, uh, keywords like in file, input, data, by, pro. So, these are the keywords, and you will, you know, get to know more and many more uh, data keywords or SAS keywords. Statement. Statement without a uh, sorry with a keyword starts with a keyword and ends with the semicolon. So, this is a very and really important thing to know that every statement which you are working with in SAS is going to end with semicolon. If you are not using semicolon at the end of your statement or any statement, it's going to give you error. Right? So for all the programmers, whether you are new or old, make a habit to use semicolons at the end of your statement. Now, step. Steps start with data or proc. So as we have already discussed that there are two steps in a SAS program, data and proc. So each step starts either with data or proc and ends with a step boundary. What is step boundary? We'll discuss in detail. Okay. So here is a question. The classwork quiz. How many keywords are there in the following? So as I have already said that Keyword could be in file, output, data, and by. Similarly, uh, you, you have a lot of keywords here like data. We have run. We have proc, print, data, where, run, proc, sort, data, then by, and then descending, proc, means, data, where, and run. So these all are the keywords. Steps, how many steps are there? So you need not to do anything, just count all the semicolons in this program. Because I said that each statement ends with a semicolon. So if you can count statement, uh, sorry, semicolons, you will find the number of statements in the program. So like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So there are 11 statements. And how many steps are there in the program? So step starts with either data or proc, right? To count all the data steps and all the procs. So how many steps are there? One, this is two, this is three, and this is four. So there are four steps in this program, 11 statements and n number of, uh, n number, when I say n number, you can count all the keywords which, are, which were there, right? So it will give you the answer that keyword stem, data run, proc, var, run, proc, by, proc, var and run. These are the keywords. 11 statements and 4 steps. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 steps. Alright? Everything is clear till now? Alright. So everything is good to go. Then let's getting move ahead. Let's step boundary. The word we just used that ends with this step boundary that each step ends with its step boundary so step boundary what is step boundary let's take an example that what is step boundary they have you know shown a beautiful map of india and there are various states now the example which they, we are going to take is just a region it says it is like a border of two states you can see between, between tamil nadu 
we have uh, one side we have Karnataka, one side we have Kerala, and one side we have Andhra Pradesh. So left side of border of one state, right side another state. So it's the boundary lies between two steps. Or basically, if a, if you talk about this uh, map, then the step boundary is nothing but the line between two states. That is what that is what we call you know this step boundary. And similarly, when we are working with SAS program, we have step boundaries between two steps, which distinguishes that my first step has been completed. Now I'll be working with the next step. All right. So step boundary in a SAS program that SAS detects the end of a step when it encounters one of the following: a run statement, or a quit statement or the beginning of another step. In what? When I say beginning of another step, either you get a data keyword or a prop keyword. So if any of these three things you uh, the SAS encounters in the program, it starts another step. And so an very important thing that some SAS programmers do not type run statement when one step gets over and the next one begins. It is not hard and fast rule by to type run to indicate the step boundary, but it's recommended that you use because that helps uh, other readers or other use as users or SAS programmers to understand your code. You should be a good SAS programmer. I mean, when I say you should be a good SAS programmer, you should write your code so that in a way so that other can understand, right? You should not write a code which only you can understand. So it's good and recommended practice to use when you stop your talk or data step. How many steps are contained in a program? Answer, the count the number of step boundaries and you can find the number of steps in the program. Okay. So the run editor window, sorry, the, the editor window says draw the line every step boundary. The program we see here has a three step boundaries and hence four steps, right? So these lines are nothing but the step boundaries. Now let me show you that how automatically these lines get created into the SAS environment. I am going to write a program. I will not write a program right now. I'll just copy paste this again and again. You can see every time I write head enter and go to the this proc. If you want, I can write data as well. Data, as I have written data, uh, you can see a line, right? So this line is nothing but the step boundary. And every time you, you know, you will hit enter and uh, either you will write proc, sorry, proc, data, run, and then proc, okay? So as soon as you will uh, see, Every step ends with either run or quit. There are uh, something where you will be using quit or you will be using run. But these things are used to you know end your step, whether it is data or proc. And every step begins with either proc or data. So if you want to find out the number of total number of steps in this program, you just count these lines, add one, okay? Because uh, as soon as you will end it and you will start another program, then only you can see uh, this step boundary. So you can, uh, to find out the number of steps in a program, you can add one to number of step boundaries. So this is so this is how it will look like to you now. Uh, let me just go ahead and show you that uh, the editor window SAS draws a line for each step boundary. The program we see here has three step boundaries. All right, three step boundaries and hence four steps. So data from run one step, prop to run another step. Proc, this is another step, and then again proc to the this is another step. So there are four steps and 
three step boundaries. All right. Now let's move. How many steps are there in this code? So if you will just read it and you will automatically know that how many steps are there. To know how many steps, just read either data or prop. So one, two. There are two steps. There is only one, uh, I would say, there is only one step boundary. So it means two steps. Adding comments in SAS. So while using SAS, you can add comments anywhere in the program. Anything added in the comment will not be processed by SAS. So uh, use comments judicially so that everyone looks at the code, can understand what is the purpose of the code. Sometimes even the author of the code will benefit from knowing what he has typed. So, so what basically happens in each language, irrespective of it, uh, the platform, but each uh, programming language have a commenting, commenting facility. So you can you know comment your code so that uh, next time you go through that code you can understand that what is written in it. And if anybody who is new to the system and he, if he goes to that you know code he will understand that what exactly that code is talking about. So in order to write code here in SAS you use there are multi-liner code as well as a single liner code. So if you want to uh, just put the code in single line. So let me just write a code first of all. Prop print data and I'll go back to the library SAS help again. I'll print the data SAS help dot baseball. I will end my statement with semicolon. I will write run. I know that this is going to print some, you know, data set, baseball, but if I write like this, asterisk, this is going to print baseball data set. All right. So you can see that I have put a comment here and it tells me that this is going to print the baseball data set. But when I will run this program, it will run this program, it will print baseball data set. But the program is not going to read this line, first one, because it is commented. Okay, this way code line will not be compiled, it will not be executed. So that is why it didn't give me any error. It is just for information for the user or who is reading that program. Now, this is the single liner comment which I have just made. If you want, you can make multi liner comment. And for that, you can use slash star and you can copy paste the same line. I'll copy paste this like this, like this, like this. And then I will end my comment here. So you can see this is a multi liner comment and the system is not going to read these comments. I can run my program like this. Or if you want, I can show you how to run the complete. I have selected all the rows. I will run it. Again, I will get only my list. Nothing else apart from that. So, now these are the results from the result window. If you want to go to the last win result, you can click here like this if you want to go to the first result you can click here so this is how you navigate with the help of result window from one uh, system to another okay guys a quick info if you are looking for an end-to-end -end training in SAS for data science we at IntelliPad provide you that course and you can check those details in the description now let's continue with this session okay comments can be single liner or multiple liner so I have just shown you that uh, it could be multi liner or single liner as well these are the examples they have given here that data hello hello is equal to good morning SAS user how are you doing today and then run so this is how you create let, let's create this data set for you uh, let me say data hello and I will say they have said hello is equal to how are you okay 
I'll end my statement with semicolon and then I will say run. So this is what data set I have created. I go to log window. I can see the data set work.hello has one observation one variable. It was created successfully. I'll go back to my program again and I'll write prop print data data name hello and then run. If I run this, I'll see the output in output window. So it says hello, how are you? Alright. Now uh, the initial thing which I told that here I have not mentioned any library before my data set name. In this statement you can see that I have mentioned sas help dot base mall. So I'm referring to this library. But in this statement I have not given any library name. So as I told that if I will not mention any library, it will by default go to the work library and save it over there. So we can check that now. Work library. And this is the hello data set here. If you want to double click on it, you can see hello one, how are you? All right, so this is how your data sets get created and you submit your program in this way. But as soon as I will clean, uh, I will you know close this data set, uh, SAS environment, I will not get this. Let me just copy this and I will close. Okay, I have closed the SAS environment. I'll open it again. I'll go back to my work library, nothing is there. So that is why I said that if you want to save anything permanently, so save it into a permanent library, not in the work library. But normally suppose that when we are working and in, uh, in any process, in intermediate thing, we, we create a lot of you know data sets, then we definitely save them in work because at the end of the program, we don't need those data sets. Now the current folder, so current folder is nothing but it gives you the location where your uh, you know operations are being taken care of. So all the operations being taken care. So in the SAS environment you can see here C users S model. So this tells you that this is the current folder where your operations are being taken care. Of. So this is nothing. If you want, you can just change it. Anything else, and you can click OK. So it will change, right? So let's move. Submitting program I already told you that either you can click F8 or click on that running man, you can submit your program. So we have you know seen all uh, the things that how to write a program. This is the basic program which I have written and I have submitted that. So it's gonna help you a lot. So what you can do is just you know work with some of the basic programs, just try to get familiar with all the windows. That long window, output window, try to navigate through the help windows or the options from the help then explorer and result and try to get familiar with all these menus uh, which you see here in the menu bar or in the menu ribbon so once you get familiar we can go ahead in our next class and we'll tell you that how to you know work create libraries and how to create bigger functions on sas program all for today Alright then, thank you so much. We will be working on various techniques to import, export, proc, to copy data or to create data set into SAS. And then uh, like we'll be working with a lot of data sets and files, SAS files. And uh, after that we will work with uh, a while work reading and subsetting SAS data sets. So uh, basically let me tell you that SAS, SAS is a test statistical analysis software or system so this was you know started by an agriculture institute in california and in 1961 and they developed this tool for their analysis and then after that it got you know so famous so that every i mean most of the organizations started using sas for their analytical work and um, basically uh, FDA, you must be, uh, you know, you, you must have heard of FDA, that Food and Drug Authority of America, right? So that uh, uses SAS for every, you know, sample, whatever they receive for a medicine. So they want the data regarding every medicine in SAS format only.
so it is you know well known and world known uh, tool for analysis services or analysis practice people have started using it and uh, you know uh, in most of the health organizations or uh, people who are involved in statistical analysis they use sas as a primary tool there are other tools in the market like you can say r and then we have spss or other tools as well in the market which are used for the same purpose but sas is the mostly used tool across the industry across the world so uh, the components of basically sas i told you that the uh, sas software which we get uh, the window which you are looking at right now this is basically called sas base so sas base uh, like in the software is called sas base but again Uh, the material or the course which we go through, right? So that is also known as SAS base in the market. But uh, when we talk about macros and proxy SQL, so we we say that those topics come into SAS advanced course. So that is what the course categorization is. That uh, the basically the commands or the syntax or program which we write into the base SAS software come into the base SAS course curriculum. But proxy SQL and SAS macros they come into advanced SAS. Uh, let me tell you that apart from this component, the SAS window which you see, apart from this, a uh, SAS has provided you other GUI version wherein you can interact, and that is called as SAS Enterprise Guide. So let me open that first. If you go to the SAS folder here, I have SAS Enterprise Guide version 6.1. So if I click it, it is again a SAS tool, right? So e either you can have this SAS or you can work on this uh, SAS Enterprise Guide as well. You will be you know working uh, on the same same way, but working on SAS Enterprise Guide is uh, user friendly. I mean, you work very easily. The SAS so a tool which you saw here, it is on your local, right? So whatever data sets which you create, that gets saved into your local system. But when when you are using the SAS Enterprise Guide, then you have advantages that you can access the data available on servers as well. You can create local databases as well as you can interact with the data sets located on servers. So. Right here in the server list, you can see that servers, then private OLAP servers. Okay, so OLAP is basically OLTP and OLAP. You must have heard of this is online analytical pro protocol or processing. So uh, there are databases which are uh, specifically used for analytical things, analytical services or analytical processing. So you you know you access those databases from this server list. Like one not connected to any server. That is why you are not getting uh, them here. But if I click on this plus sign, you will get local. So local is nothing but my system. So whatever database has, bases or sorry data sets are located on my system, those will get reflected here. But right now I am not connected to anything, or I have not linked uh, any local data data sets here. So you might not see them. But like you know, I mean after some time, I'll show you that how to you know. Create data sets on your system. Then we'll be you know interacting, or we can you know navigate to them. You can see that I have got all the libraries uh, from my system, and that is why you get a lot of folders. And if I try to navigate from this folder to other data sets, then definitely you will get uh, some of them. So uh, if you want me, just give me a minute. I'll show you that how to uh, navigate to the data sets located on my system. So. I have a one data set on my desktop, so I'll go to my desktop right here. Which is basically SAS data set. So this is OGS text dot SAS seven B dot. So all the files which you see right now are from my desktop. So this is the way how you can navigate into a uh, SAS Enterprise Guide for any data set which you want to look for. If I double click on it, you will see that data set will open into the SAS environment like this.
So uh, this is also a very, uh, you know, used on very extensive way in the market, SaaS Enterprise Guide. It's nothing but uh, you can say the client version of the SaaS based software which we use for our day to day work. So I think that's enough for the SaaS introduction and the tools available for this. Now, as I initially said that what I wanted to cover today. So let's go ahead and I'll be starting with the topic which we have mentioned for today. So it says various techniques to import and export rock or copy. So basically, uh, uh, the first topic which we have for today is PROC copy. PROC copy is a procedure using which any data set can be copied to an output library from an input library. So you must be remember, you must have remember that what library is. I told you that library is nothing but the reference to a location where you save your data sets. So uh, in SAS environment, I did show you that these are the libraries wherein uh, you must have some data in it like this these are the data sets into the SAS library and I told you the difference between the work library and the SAS help or SAS user library that in work library whatever you save that will you know get vanished as soon as you close your session right now there was another library this SATYA which I created so whatever data set I'm going to you know save here, that will be for my reference. So now, when we uh, talk about this proc copy, so let me just tell you that what this does. It says that proc copy is a procedure. So I told you that there are two parts of SAS program. First one is the data part, and another is proc. So this is a proc part, and which is used to uh, copy any data set from one library to another. The syntax is given below. So now it says that, for example, following code copies two data sets, uh, ADOM message and ADS message from SAS help into the work library. Now, since an Excel workbook can be used as a SAS library after the appropriate lib name statement, one can use proc copy even read from uh, read or write to from or to Excel workbook, right? So when I talk about Excel workbook, so Excel workbook is nothing but a type of database you can see having the sheets in it, worksheets in it. If there is any data, so that data behaves like as a uh, database or the Excel workbook behaves like as a database. So this is how you know uh, you, you can you know even treat an Excel file as database and you can import or export the data into that as well. So the next thing which we are going to do is the import and export wizard. So the import wizard enables you to read data from an external data source and write it to the SAS data set. So basically if you look into your uh, SAS window, the first option says file and here, here you have options like import data and export data. So these things are you can use to, you can use to import data into SAS or export data from the SAS, right? So let me show you the further options. And before I do that, let me create a file here so that I can show you that how to import data or export data from that. So I'll be creating a test file here. Let's say test text and I will put some data into it, okay? So let me insert some data, name, first column is name, then I have ID here. So I'll give name as Sathendra, then ID as I will give 10, next line I will give Ram, then ID I will give 12, then I will take let's say John, and ID I will give 15. Then let's say I'll take Jeff and then I will say 20. So this is the data which I have created. I'll save this uh, on my desktop and I will go back to the system, SAS system. So here you can see that I have a list of a lot of sources as uh, so the type of sources from which I can, you know, import data into the SAS environment. So we have Excel file, first one is Microsoft Excel workbook, then Microsoft Access database, Microsoft Excel workbook on PC file server, then access, 
comma separated values, tab delimiter, delimited files. So these are the various type of data sources from which you can you know, import data into SAS environment. What I'm going to do now is I'll take as I have taken tab delimited file, so I will select tab delimited file. I'll click next. So it says where is the file located? I will have to browse that file. So that's on my uh, desktop and its name was test. So I will browse to the test file like this. Click next. And it says member. Member is you know uh, nothing but a type of databases. It says that uh, what type of database data set it is. So if I'm in into the work library, I have the list of these data sets. Basically, a member is telling you to append the data. Suppose that if you if you already have a data set into your uh, library, then you can append into the any existing data uh, data sets. So right now, uh, let's say I want to create a new data set. So I'll have to uh, give any a new name here. Let's say I will give new. Okay. And uh, whatever the code, like uh, what I mean code, right now I'm just using import export wizard. So if you're using import export wizard, SAS automatically creates a syntax for this for you. Okay. So let me write that with the name of hello. And if I browse it, so let's see, I browse it to my desktop and the name I will give it to SAS Hello. Okay. And I can click on finish. So as soon as I have clicked on finish, you can go, you can go back to the log window and you can see that my proc started from here. It tells you the external file interface, SAS develop code, desktop code. Then it has given some its code and you can just read the read the notes into the blue line that in file C user SAS user desktop text or text is the file name and it has given other things then when last modified and created. Four records were read from this file. The minimum record length was six and maximum record length was twelve. So it has created a new data set into work library, has four observation and two variables. So we can go to work and you can see this is the data set which got created here. If I click on it, you can see that these are the records which were there in the text file. So by using import wizard, I've just imported the data from SAS from text file to the SAS environment. Now uh, you remember that I told you that whatever operation I'm doing here, whether it is import or export SAS, creates a code for that, syntax for that, so, which I saved into the SAS window. So let's see if I open this, you can see that this is the program which SAS has created for us. So if next time you want to import the data from that text file, you can directly run this code. So it says, Proc import out work.new data file. This is the link to that file. Tab delimited. Get name yes. Get name yes is basically for the headers. If I say it no, it will not pick the headers. So let us suppose if I say no and if I run it again. So basically what it has done is it has uh, because uh, we already had that data data set new. Let's I will say new dot one. So it will create a new data set for you. And you can see it does not have the headers. It says var one, var two, variable one, variable two. So that yes or no is nothing but it specifies the headers. Whether you want to import headers into your uh, SAS data set or not. Right? So this is the code created by SAS and which, which is reusable. You can use it anytime to import data from the text file. Okay, now before I do anything with the Excel file, let me tell you that there is some component missing for the Excel file uh, which we can use to import data into this SAS environment. But the same I can show you into the enterprise guide. Uh, what I mean is I'm going to import some data from a text file to the SAS environment, right? So I'll go here, I have import data. I've clicked on import data. Now it gave me this wizard. 
so the, here i have some files test one test so i'll select test one and i'll click open so you can see that it going to see it has picked the test one file from this location and it is going to create a, a data set into the work library called test one if i click next opening excel files this is exactly how etl operation works etl is extraction transformation and loading thing so again you have option if you want to you know see the code which is that going to create for you if you click embedded then it will create a code for you right here and if you will not select it it will not create that so basically you if you are working using enterprise guide or you are using sas uh, both are useful sas also creates code for you and enterprise get can also so this is the data which i have just imported from the uh, sas imported from the excel file right and if you really want to see it that uh, how this looks like so you can go here into the work library which we had let me close it local files oh, sorry library so if i click on library i have work library here you can see that this is the text data which is got created here but i as i told that work library all the data sets which are there in the work library are session specific so whatever data set which we have created here that is only for this session and uh, whatever data sets which I have created here, those are specific to this work library. I don't see C, uh, test here and you do not see these uh, data sets into this session. So both are separate session but are specific to the uh, work library. As soon as these sessions or the SaaS system will be closed, uh, these data sets will also vanish. There will not be any existence of these things. Alright, so let's go to the PPT once again. So this was the import wizard which we just have used into SaaS Enterprise Guide and then we used into the SaaS environment. It says that uh, steps we have just followed. You can you know go through them once again. Similarly, export to export any data set from the SaaS. Let's see, this is the data set which I'm going to export. So I'll have to go to export data. And then from which library you want to pick up data, whether from Satya or from work. I've selected work then all the data sets it will show from the work library so I have uh, let's suppose I have selected by okay it says that write variable labels as column name so if I have selected it I click on next these are the things uh, the type in which you want to export your data let's see let me select Excel but I know that Excel was giving some error on my system it will ask me to you know select any workbook which is located on my system so let me create a textbook here text file i have created a one okay it's not letting me create so as i already told that there might be some issue with the there is my some issue with the excel uh, and sas uh, on my system let me create a text file then. All right. So these are the all the files which have been created. The version was different. Sorry. So I have selected one Excel file. I'll click save or append. You got both the options. If already the, if data is already there, then you can you know either replace or append. So I'll say append. And if I click OK, so it is exporting some data into it. Let's see. Give it a minute. And then we'll go back and check that. Okay. So this is exactly what I was saying is that there is some uh, problem uh, using Excel and the component of Excel is missing for SAS. So I'll export the data into text file for you. Right? So let me select a tab delimited file. I click yes. I'll save the file into my desktop and then enter it back. I'll select the text file, save, I'll say append. And it says that append is not supported. Do you want to replace? I'll say OK and finish. I'll go back to the location.
Okay, this was the Excel file which we created initially. It has a lot of add-ins, that is why it takes time. Let's give it a minute. All right, so it does not have any data into the Excel file, but I remember that I used, I created a text file here. So let's see where that text file is. Okay, this was the library. These are the data sets which I have here. Okay, I'm not sure that what happened with it, but let me try again. I'll export some other data sets. Close it. Go back to file. Export data from work library, the air. Next, I'll select tab delimited. Sorry, tab delimited. Next, I want to save my file into desktop and telepath. Tab delimited, let me give it a name. Test file and select this. Okay. Replace. Next. This is a place where it's giving me to save the code. Uh, let's say I'll save it again on desktop and I will replace because I know that already there is a hello file. Okay. Now if I go back into the location and check for the file, so you can see that we have a file here and it has some data. So this is same data for the air data set. So we have exported data from air data set from the work library to this particular text file. And the code which we saved here, that is this. So if I go back, okay, so this is the old uh, data only. Let me create a new code for it, for you. So, all right, if I do it once again, export data, work, next, tab delimited. This is what we exactly used. Where I want to save the file, I'll save the file into the same location like this. Okay, replace, next, F1 statement to be generated, okay, I did select it, hello, okay, I did not mention the location that time, replace and finish, so if you go back and check into this hello file, you will get the code to export data now. Okay, there, is some, there was some confusion, right? So the first code which you see that was for the import. This is proc import. And then you, here you have proc export. So this is how you know what you can do is you can create uh, or as, a, as we have created the code for SAS import and export and you can further use these codes uh, or you can modify this as per your requirement and you can use it further. Uh, right now we are using text file but you can work with the Excel access, SPSS file or other files as well where you can work with your data. I'll show you the same thing from the enterprise guide that how can you export your uh, data. So this is the data which I have, test one. I'll go here, I'll click on export. It says that export data imported from the text.excel. So let's see. Just save in, where you want to save the data. So I'll go to IntelliPath and I'll create this Excel file, wherein I want to save the data once again. So if I go back to the IntelliPath location, so this is the data set which got exported into the SAS format. If you want to change the format, you can anytime do that. 
right? So these are the various ways you can import and export data from SAS to your local. Now let's move to the next thing. That's reading and subsetting the data set. So basically this is the part where we work a lot of data mining things as in SQL when we can you know filter the data, we can create subsets of the data sets. So the similar kind of activities we are going to do here. So it says that we can create a data set using data stored in another data set. So let us suppose we have our data set into one library or let us say that usually we have data into that's help a lot of data we have here. So we can use subset some of the data from any of these data sets and they, we can create another data set. So the syntax for that would be nothing but same as you can see here that data libref1.b libref1 is a library reference the data set name is b and uh, the next row you are using set libref2.a so libref is a library reference of the second library and where data set is a and run so what it's going to do is you are creating a new data set uh, libref1.b and you are putting all the data from library uh, 2 of the data set a right so our code will create a data set B with the data and descriptor portion identical to the data set A. Libref1 and Libref2 can be same or different, right? Libref is just the library reference which you want to give. And they can be temporary or permanent. When I say temporary, it could be a work library. Or permanent, it is your defined library. So earlier we have seen the data statement between with the data step. And the function of the data statement, it gives the name of a new data set being created. Note, if data set is specified and the data statement is pre-existing, it will be overwritten. So kindly be careful. So that is the thing to, you know, uh, keep in mind that if uh, libref1.b is already existing and you are running this code again, so the previous data set or the initial data set will get replaced. Okay, overwritten. That will be overwritten. So let me go back to my SAS window and I will write a program. So let's say I am going to write work where I want to save my data set or I want to create new data set. I will say new data. I have given new data set. Let's see what happens. Now what I want to set it as, I want that it should have the same data or the same descriptor portion as uh, this data set which is in the SAS help library. So you need to mention libref2 and d-e-s-k-a-c-t. This is the exact name which I have given. I will end it and I will run my prop for the data step. I have run it. Let me go back to log. It says that there were 123 observations read from the data set this and if I go back and check into the data set, oh sorry, into this system, if I go back and check into uh, my work library, so you can see that new data set has been created. It would have the same data, same descriptor portion as SAS help dot discap or data set. So you can see that this was the proc system where we manipulated data. Here we have just created a new data set. So these are the two programs which are you know part of a SAS program. One is the data step and another is the proc step. So this is how you know we use our system. Okay. Now let me go back and all right. Now the set statement. This is what exactly we have just done. That set statement reads observation from the SAS data set for further processing in a data step. By default, the set statement reads all observation and all variables from the input data set. The set statement can read temporary or permanent data set. The terminology is from this slide onwards till the end of base SAS, we will refer to the data set given in the SAS statement as output data set and the data set given in the set statement as input data set. All right. Okay. Let's move to the next slide. So here what it says, the things to remember. 
So while you are creating uh, you know, the data sets using set statement, so what are the things which you need to keep in mind so that uh, you should not go haywire, right? So in case of, in case you interchange the line two, and if your output data set exists, then the input data set will be overwritten. Understand? When I say input, if I use input data set here and output data set over there, so as soon as you will interchange, your existing data set will vanish. So you need to, you know, uh, keep it in mind and you need to be aware that what exactly you are going to use so that you can, you know, use it in a better way. Then, in case when you do some mistake, if output data set does not exist, then input data set will be overwritten with the null data set. Okay. In case you overwrite any data set in SAS Health, you might get an error message or worse, you might lose that data set entirely because that is, you know, by default data set given by the SAS. And if you overwrite that, then definitely you will lose it and you cannot get, uh, get it until unless you will not download from Google or SAS uh, again. In some cases, you might have to reinstall SAS else it might not launch. So the, this is one of the possibility which can happen in the worst condition. Now, please decide beforehand which is the input data set and which is the output data set till you master SAS. So since I don't want you to, you learn, you learning this the hard way. So be aware that what you are going to do. And first of all, keep in mind that what exactly you want to do and then do that. So input data set comes in the set statement and must exist, the, uh, the second line. And output data set will be the new data set which you want to create. If it is already existing, it will be overwritten as soon as you will run these statements. Alright? So, on the next slide, it says that create a replica of SAS health.or sales in the work library and call the output data set as sales. So, this is for you as an uh, assignment. Do that and let's see if you are able to do it or not. Right? Keep in mind that you are copying a data or you are taking input data set from SAS help.or sales and you are creating a new data set into your work library. All right. Now, uh, when we talked about the subsetting of data sets, so here is what where statement. So see how you wanna create a subset for your data set. So where statement subset observation that meets a particular condition, general form of a where statement, where and expression. This is the one line which you need to put it into your SAS program. Now, where expression is a sequence of operands and operators. Operands include constant and variables, operator symbols that request a comparison, arithmetic calculation or logical operators. So, it could be your AND or so uh, these things you can use for your uh, you know operators. Now, uh, then submitting means filtering observation or creating a small data set from a big data set. Now, consider the data set sales we have just created. So, we have created an OR sales data set from the work library. Okay. Now, what we have, uh, we are going to do, a, we, are, we are going to create a subset where product line is equal to children. So, this is the example what they have given. Now, let, let, let us see that whether we have over sales into the SAS help or not for us so that we can SAS help OR sales. I will not go through the complete list. What I'm going to do is I will check whether I have that data set into here or not. So I will write rock print data is equal to SAS help dot OR was OR sales, right? OR sales and then run. If I will have data here, then it will print it for me. Otherwise, it will give an error. Okay, so we have this data set into SAS help window. Now, what I'm going to do here is I will create a subset of it, right? I'll say data. Then uh, let us say I'm going to create it into the work library. Then I will say SAS data set. Or let's say subset. And then I need to use set. 
Okay, so this is what it's going to create into the work library. But I'm getting uh, the SAS, the input data set which I have, that is from the SAS help. So I will write SAS help dot or sales, right? Okay, I need to take OR sales. It says where the condition which I was supposed to use, let me print it again so that we can see that what condition I want to, you know, look for. Let's say product category, okay? Clothes. So I'm going to create a data set or subset where product category is equal to clothes. So I take only all the records where product category is clothes. I want to create a data set with those records only and I'll run it. So as soon as I will run it, you can see, I will go back to log, it says 240 observation read from the SAS data set OR sales where product category is equal to clothes. So I'll go to my work library, and you can that subset has been created and it has all the records with the product category clothes. All right, it has in total 1,240 records, all the records for clothes. So we have created a SAS data set or subset from the OR sales SAS health library wherein we have taken all the records for the clothes. So this is how you know we have created a subset using where clause. Now there are other ways as well which you can use to you know create data set. So we'll be looking into them as well. Let me move to the next slide. Now we create the data set this from this which has the data pertaining to that year. So again you, they have they want you to do this would be your assignment that you are going to create a data set where year should be one triple line. 1999 alone. Okay. All right. Operands. A constant operand is a fixed value. Okay. Character value must be enclosed in quotation marks and numeric values do not use quotation marks. So you must be aware that in SAS we have only two data types. One is numeric and another is a character. So for characters you, you, you need to use quotation marks as I have used into this uh, in, with clothes. But for numeric fields, you do you need not to use uh, these single quotes. You can directly give a numerical value. A variable operand must be a variable coming out from an input data set. For example, where gender is equal to n, it was a character that field. That is why they have enclosed into quotation mark. But salary is a numerical field. That is why they have given the numbers as it is without numerical field. In the above two statements, identify the variable and the constants, numeric or character, right? It's very and pretty easy. Let us use one of the examples which uh, with the numerical field, okay? So I have just, we have just done a, a example with the character field, now with the numerical field. So in order to do it with the numerical field, let's say we have quantity, right? So what I'm going to do is I will write this again but let's say underscore 2 and this time I will take quantity here I'm going to take quantity I'll copy it here and I want to create this data set where the quantity is more than 100 as soon as we will run this statement SAS will create Another data set for us, it says there were 866 observations read from the data set SAS help.or sales where quantity is greater than 100. So if I go back, if I go back to the expression window, okay, I want to see my expression with uh, explorer window. Okay, so in order to see that, Explorer, Work Library, this is subset 2. If I double click on it, you can see that all the records which I have here has the 
number of items that is quantity actually that will be uh, greater than 100 it will not have any field in this column which is less than 100 so this is how i have created another data set has in having the 866 records so basically this is the way you were using where clause but the difference which you have that for character fields you use single quotes for numerical fields you do not use single quotes so this is how you can create a data set using where clause right now let's move to the next slide it's just comparison operator so in SAS we have these comparison operators which you can use uh, you know like we have used equal to and uh, greater than so similarly uh, these are the symbols in the first column which you see you can use either these symbols you can use eq and e not equal to so you can use this string form as well the meaning of these is given here and how to use them it's given into the example so the first one is equal to then not equal to again not equal to not equal to so you can use not equal to three times or three different ways then greater than less than greater than or equal to less than or equal to or inoperant so for any same as you you do in sas uh, sorry sql so these are the ways you can use these comparison operators into sas to create your subset to filter your data set or to create a subset of a data set from one library to another now arithmetic operators which we use so arithmetic operators indicate that an arithmetic calculation is performed right and the symbol is given here that two asterisk is for exponentiation okay the power basically multiplication one asterisk division same as you do in mathematics so basically exponentiation or the power thing you can use two asterisk and for multiplication one so we'll be using these as well when we'll be working with huge data or if it would be required to create any manipulation in the data. Then logical operators. Logical operators combines or modify expressions so and or or not. These are the symbols which you can use and you know use and or or not while creating or subsetting data set or while doing some data mining. So you'll be using this as well. And this is the example what they have given here. Okay. So they are trying to create a subset. Okay, they are trying to create a subset which says a data subset to and set SAS help dot or sales where year in 2000 or 2002 and the product line is children and profit is greater than 5000. So if you want, we can run the direct statement and we'll see that how it is going to create subset let's say three for us. So as soon as we have ran it, you can go back to your explorers, work, and you can see subset 3 has been created. So this is what we have just created, right? It has 63 records. If you go to the log window, you can see that as well. That there were 63 observation read from the data set. So you can see that wherever we will get error, you will get like this. your successful notes are in blue color and warnings you will get in you know green color so we haven't seen got any warning yet but there will be things where we'll be using uh, the uh, getting the warnings as well so uh, we are going to cover today uh, reading data sets and subsetting data sets we'll talk about labels and we'll talk about formats that what are the formats and labels in SAS. So before I go ahead uh, with the terms reading and subsetting data sets, so let me just tell you that in our previous call we saw some options or functions which were used to uh, subset data sets like where or we did work with a lot of operators and operands. So uh, let me just continue with them and I would like to show here that these are the comparison operators I told you in the previous class that we can use these functions to subset our data sets. So uh, let me just tell you that you can use symbols like this equal to or you can use eq as well at the place of equal to right and how you are going to use that either you can write a is equal to 3 
or you can write a eq3 in same way not equal to you can write in all these three types all right or you can write ne like they have given an example here that a n e3 so this is not equal to same way greater than then we have less than we have greater than or equal to or you can write less than or equal to and similarly in so in will work in the same way as we have been working into sql server all right so let's see now we have arithmetic operators what are arithmetic operators arithmetic operators indicate that an arithmetic calculation is performed right and when we say arithmetic calculation it could be your multiplication addition division subtraction or exponentiation exponentiation is nothing but the power like you want to create the power or you want to get the power of any uh, number right so these are uh, the various mathematical operators which you can use to perform some mathematical calculation now we have logical operators logical operators in all subjects are always same that's and or or not but here in sas environment we have a different symbols so uh, for and we will be using this and then uh, or we have two pipeline operators and then we have you know uh, exclamatory sign between them and not then we have these three things which you can write not right and at the place of these symbols you can use uh, your syntax like this as well all right so the symbol you use or or not depends on the operating environment so in unix you will have a different sign and in windows you will have a different sign so create a data set subset 2 from the sales that list only product line children or even numbered uh, for even numbered year and profit greater than $500 so you should get 63 observation i mean they have given uh, one exercise here so we'll be doing that let me go to sas environment so that we can you know perform the same task so i have already opened a sas session this all right so what they want us to do they want us to create a data set subset to from sales okay so uh, i told you that in library sas help we have a data set called or sales right right now you, you cannot see that but let me show you proc print you might remember how to see it because i have already told you several times that how to use this proc print you need to give data so i'll give uh, the reference to the library then data set name that is or sales i'll terminate my statement and then i will write run so as soon as i will write this or i will run this you can see that i will get an output and that will uh, show the or sales data set now you might wonder that from the beginning till till now i have been using you know proc print statement and i have been getting the result into a separate window whereas i already have a window called output all right so this is what i have you know uh, you can say i have uh, already added this option to see the output in this window but otherwise what you can do is you can uh, go to tools then options you have preferences here then you have result tab and at the place of this create html you can uncheck this all right i have unchecked that and i am going to click ok so let's see how i am going to get my results now okay 
So it said that no output destination active. Right now, I was supposed to get output here, but I haven't got that yet. So for that, I will have to you know, change some settings. And next thing I will have to go back to the same options then preferences and I will have to say create listing. Listing is but uh, nothing but the output listing what I am going to get here. So if I run it now you will see the result in output window like this. Alright now the, the other window is not get, getting popped up. I am getting all the result in the, into the output window only. So let me go back to the exercise what it said create a subset data set subset. So I told you that how to create data sets to create a data set or a subset what you need to write is you, can, you need to write data then you need to give reference to a library. So let's say I have a library called Satya here. I will say Satya dot the subset. This okay. So this would be the name of new data set which I am going to create. Now how I want to create it. So for that I will have to use input data set that I am getting from SAS help library and my data set would be OR sales. Right. So I have already sh shown you that where this data set is OR sales. Now the condition they want us to put in that the only product line children for even number. Okay. So first of all let us put uh, only children uh, as a product line. So you might have seen that in the database, uh, sorry the output which we have got, we have a column here product category or the product line basically they want us to put a filter on product line and only children. So for that I'll go back to SAS environment editor window and I will write where product line is equal to children. I'll copy the children here. Paste that into the children quotes and then I will say run. Alright. My syntax is complete but before I run this program let me tell you that SAS is not a case sensitive environment. So where uh, SAS reads Satya or SATYA or Satya all of them as a same character or same string. But if you are specifying that into code then it would read it as a case sensitive until unless you are not putting quotes in uh, around it it will not read or it will not be case sensitive. So if you want to check or validate particular value then you will have put it into strings or uh, not strings I would say you will have to put it into single quotes so that SAS will you know understand that it has to be case sensitive. Now I'm going to run my query which I have already written here. So let's see what I'm going to get now. Right, you can see that SAS subset got created. Now, first of all, before I see this data set, I'll go and check my log window. It's recommended for you as well that try to see the log window, try to get familiar with log window as soon as you can be. Right, because log window tells you each and everything that what is happening in the back end. So, here it says that data satya dot subset to set sas help dot or sales so where product line is equal to children run 
There were 176 observation read from data set sashelp.or cells. Uh, where product line is equal to children, the data set satya.subset2 has 176 observation and 8 variables. Alright? And it said that real time took this much and CPU time is this much. So, we have created a data set. Now, there are two ways I can see the data set. Either I can double click on it. It will open the data set for me. Wait a minute, it is opening the data set for us. Here we go. We have got all the records where product category or the product line is children. Alright. I'll close this. The other way of looking at the same data would be I use proc print and run. So it has shown you the output for subset subset 2 uh, data set. Alright. Now let me clear this window first. Clear all. We are again back to uh, our editor window but you might have a question here that till now whatever proc print I have been using I have been giving data and then reference to library and then the name of data set but this time I have not done that I have just written proc print and run so let me tell you that whenever you run this statement wherein you are not specifying your data set you are directly running this program or the proc print uh, function or statement SAS identifies that you want to run the last created data set okay so whenever you will run this much statement without specifying your data set name or the library name it will automatically pick the last most created data set or the latest data set so in our case if I go to library, then subset 2 was the latest data set which was created. And that is why you have got it. Or it, uh, you know, it have printed that data set. But let me tell you that uh, looking at the output into this output window is not that, uh, you know, good or user friendly. So I will switch back to the same window which I had earlier. Now you can, you may understand that why I have been looking in at that window or why I had enabled that window because I love to see the output on this explorer window so I have turned that on it takes you know it takes a time oh, no this time it didn't work uh, you can see into the log window it says uh, writing HTML body file says HTML dot HTM but it did not open okay so I will have to close this listing first of all listing means the output window whatever you get into output window and it will start using this create html so i will you know open it again i'll go back and i'll run it again so i've got the result into the explorer window again so this result looks good when you look at this, it looks beautiful. All right. Now, if you click F9, you get this window. All right. Where I just clicked F9 and I have got this window. It tells you all the keys and the definition that what they do. All right. So here you can say that F1 is for help. F2 is for reshow, F3 is for end or gsubmit buffer default, F4 is for recall, F7 is for output. Similarly, there are uh, you know uh, keys which do not have been assigned anything, but you can see that clear it has been assigned to control E. Okay, or apart from this, if you want to assign anything, you can write here and 
click save okay now I'm going to close it and if I press F12 here you can see the log got cleaned or the output got clean if I go here and click F12 you can see all the logs which were there in the log window got clean so this is how you can you know assign a definition to a key so this is again very if you are you know you, if you need to work with a lot of short keys uh, or fast keys you can you know assign the operation to those keys and you can work so this is exactly you know uh, the how the good programmers do this is the best practice or the good practice to follow so i would recommend you to create some you know keys fast keys for yourself so that you can use them and work all right so uh, it says control b is for library let me just do control b into control b okay i've got the wind a list of libraries here so again yes it's working now uh, let me go back to the slide not uh, see on the slide basically it said that create a data set subset to from sales that list only product line children for even numbered years and profit greater than five thousand dollar so till now i have put only one condition and that was that the product line children now i am going to put another condition that says that profit should be greater than five thousand dollar so uh, you can see here that profit column is this i'm gonna put this condition and right so you will be using and operator with the latest condition so i will write and profit should be greater than 5000 all right i already have this subset too if i do not mention a new name it will overwrite my previous data set that is subset 2 so uh, let me show you uh, that I'm going to create third data set called subset 3 I'll run this condition or the program subset 3 got created and if I run this query it will run the latest one it means subset 3 you can see this is the subset 3 now here so all the records or the pro profit you can see that is greater than five thousand dollar you will not see a single record with less than or equal to five thousand dollar now this time i have got 122 records but my exercise or the result says that i'll be getting 63 observation but i have 122 records why because we are still left with one condition that says for even numbered years so now we need to put even numbered years now what is the way by which i will find out only the even numbers all right let me tell you so even numbered years you can see in the year okay so let us use mod let's see what i'm going to get i'll put another condition into this and i have column years right this even numbered years so i will say into the editor window i'll write mod years divided by 2 should be 0 let's see what it does it ran I need to check into okay function mod requires at least two arguments so the mod function which we have used is not correct mm, okay I may be missing something in the mod function all right let me check okay 
So this is the best place where I can show you that how to look for help into SAS. Okay. I will go to this book icon which says help or you can click F1. The another window will open and then we will see the mod function. All right. Now get you should also see that how to get help from the SAS. I have put mod. It says mod function and it says mod function returns the reminder from the division of first argument by the second argument. Division of first argument by the second argument. So what is the syntax? It will tell you that how to write that syntax. So basically uh, the place where I use the divide sign or the divisible sign, you need to just use comma. Right? Now if we run it, let's see what it's going to do. I will go back to the log window again and it said that it started from here and it said that there were 63 observation read from the data set sashelp.or sales. So you, you see, can see that we have got the same number of observation as were told into the file that you should get 63 observation. We have got 63 observation and if I run this query to see the output in the output window. Here we go. You have the result here and you can see that we have got maximum 63 records. So what I have done, I have put a filter and then created a data set for product line children for profit greater than 5000 and a year should be where year is divisible by or I would say here has the even numbers. All right. Now another thing which I wanted to show uh, before this program, I created subset three when I put two conditions. Now what I have done, I have put three conditions and I have run the same program. So what would, would have happened? The data set three got overwritten. Okay. So if I put the same output uh, data set name and I uh, change the condition, so irrespective of the conditions, whatever new data set will be created will replace my existing data set. So you need to be aware of it or you need to be, you know, I would say, uh, yes, you should be aware or uh, conscious. Make it sure that you want to overwrite your old data set or not. If you don't want, change the name of your output data set. And if you want to replace or overwrite the old one, you can give the same name. Okay. So it was a good practice for us. Let's move on to the next slide. So we have uh, done this exercise. This is what they have given here. Now they have given uh, done the same exercise with a different way. They have said that year in 2000 or 2012. What we have done, we have used mod function and then we have tried to find out the result. But the other way of doing that is they have given years into in clause but for this you must have the knowledge that what are all years in the data set so they uh, i mean whoever have written this example must have been aware of that there are uh, 2000 and 2002 only two entries for the even years so that is why they have mentioned those two things here otherwise you can use uh, to make it dynamic that mod mod function remains same across Excel, SQL and SAS. So you can use it anytime to find the even numbers or the odd numbers. If I would have to found, find odd numbers, I should have written is not equal to zero. So every time or in each condition, it will give me finder. Okay. So this is how you're going to create or find all the even numbers. So let's move on to the next slide. It says assignment and here what we are going to do is that navigate to help and in index type in between and operator explain the following with example. So basically uh, now our next topic would be to work on all these things so whether between and is null is missing contains or like. All right. So let's move to the, these topics. To explain the following between an and 
up to like we will need uh, the following data set called cards which we will create conditionally from sas help dot cards so let's see do we have the data set into sas help or not so i again i will write the same thing uh, that proc print data is equal to sas help dot car then run so as soon as i will run i'll be running this proc you will see some output and if it is not there means i'm doing something wrong so you can see that it said that file sas help dot car dot data does not exist i will have to go manually into the library sas help and i need to check it out whether we have car data set here or not okay we have cards not car we have cards so i'll go back and check or change my query to cards and then i'll run this again so you can see we have got the result like we have make model type origin drive train we have msrp mark then we have invoice engine size cylinders horsepower mpg underscore city then mpg underscore highway weight wheelbase and length so we have got the data for uh, sas help library and the cards data set now what they wanted us to do is that please run the following code and create the data set okay so they have put in clause here, sorry if clause and they are using n what is this underscore n underscore let us use this and then we'll you know find it out that what is n underscore n is okay let me go back to the slide cars i'll go to sas environment my editor window i have just pasted that you know code so what they are going to do is i will create this cars uh, data set again into the satya library and i'll run this so what will happen i'll go through the log window it will tell us okay it said there were 428 observation read from the data set sas help dot cards the data set satya cards has 100 observation and 15 variables 100 observation means 100 rows and 15 observation means 15 columns the data statement use total process time this okay now let's see the data set that how, what kind of data set it has created for us so i'll run this and we will get the output into result window okay so uh, this resultant output has only 100 rows and all right now uh, let me show you uh, let me create another data set which going to tell you that what exactly the code is doing okay so i will first of all write i'll eliminate these two things i'll run this code i'll go back and proc print so as per my code i wanted that where underscore and underscore should be less than or equal to 100 less than or equal to 100 okay this was the first condition so they have given that now basically this is nothing but the observations right so this is the observation column it just puts a condition that observation should be less than or equal to 100 it should not be more than 100 right now the second condition was they wanted uh, this n underscore n in 10 20 40 30 then cylinder is equal to missing for these fields cylinder should be missing so if i implement the second condition i 
I'll go back to my data set. So it said for 10, 20, uh, let me show you that again. For 10 cylinders should be missing. Right now you can see six here. Now let me put that code and see that whether we are getting the right thing or is it something else. I've run it again. I will go back to the results window again. Okay. So you can see where my observation is 10. I've got missing as a cylinder. So earlier I was getting 6 but now we have missing value. So it says that wherever observation n underscore n is in 10, 20, 30, 40. So if I go back and check for the 20th row, I would have the same situation over there. If I go back to the 30th row, I will have the same situation over there. If I go back to the 40th row, I will have the same situation over there and same for row number 50. Alright, now let us implement the third condition. What was that? It says that if observation is in between 15, 25, 30, 45, 55, then type is equal to blank, right? So for 15th row, let's see what is it there in the 15th row and the type. So we have for 15th row, we have C then as type. So as soon as I will be implementing this, you know, this condition, I will have blank as in type. So I'll go there and I'll write another statement and I'll run my query and I'll, you know, proc print my state data set once again. So you can see on the 15th row, we have blank here, right? 15th, we have blank. Now, you can say that in cylinder, I was getting a dot over there, but in case of, uh, you know, type, it's blank. There's nothing. All right. So later down the line, we see that the code does. However, for the inquisitive, we are creating a subset of OSAS help dot cards where we initially filter out the only first hundred observations. Within that, we change the value of variable cylinder to the missing for five observation where uh, observation was 5, 20, 30 and 40 and 50. And do the same for five observation for variable type. All right. So we have, you know, change the values to missing values for these observations. So these were the topics which were left from the first session. Now let's move on to the next slide which I wanted to cover today. And in continuation with a lot of functions, we have between and and, right? So let's read that what it's talking about and we'll be, you know, using them. So this, it says the between and condition outputs all observations that fall within a range specified by the said statement. For example, our data set car has various cylinder size between 1.6 liter and 6 liters. The following code will print out the observation that have engine size between 2 liter and 4 liter. So basically, till now whatever we have been doing with the car's data set, now we are going to put another condition and this time I'll be creating another data set uh, engine size. Okay, so I'll take I'll change the name of output data set and I will say data satya dot engine size. Let's say size. All right. I've given this a name engine size and now my conditions will change. So what condition I want to specify here that where engine size so engine size is given into this column. Engine size is between 
what condition I need to give 2 and 4 alright so I want all the records where engine size is between 2 and 4 I want all those records for cards where uh, engine size is between 2 and 4 and that to be saved into engine size data set so I'll be you know copy paste copying this proc so that I can reuse it here we go and I will run all these once again I have selected both of them and ran so it has created the data set for me and you can see here that engine size would be between 2 and 4 when I say 2 and 4 and I am using between so it will cover 2 as a minimum value and 4 as a maximum value so including these two it will provide me the complete values which will fall between 2 and 4 including 2 and 4 so all the records where you see you have minimum value as 2 and maximum value as 4 I haven't seen 4 yet but yes we have a 4 here alright so it will show you all the records wherein you have you know uh, values between in engine size column the values between 2 and 4 so this is how you can use between and function into stats for subsetting it says the two value need not to be in ascending order okay and using the condition between 4 and 2 will output the same result so it's a very good thing to know that it's really not necessary that you give 2 and 4 you can give 4 and 2 as well but however you will get the same output in both the conditions when using character value the same condition outputs in alphabetical order so similarly they have used another condition here or another proc so let me just go back and I will be also writing the same thing here similar kind of function which says let's say where I'll take an, any other thing let's say it will take alphanumeric things so let's say make I'm also going to take make between Acura so it's nothing but it will see the alphanumeric thing alright or the alphabetical order not exactly the alphanumeric things it will check the alphanumeric order and I let's say Porsche and I'll run all these queries so this is the result which I wanted to see so I have make as an Acura and then if I go to the last I have Porsche so it has given me all the records between Porsche and Acura so this is how you know you can use between and either for numbers or for string or character type of you know variables okay let's move on the next slide we have is null and missing or is missing so it said is null as well as is is missing can be used to output observations that have a missing value they can both be used for a character as well as a numeric value the two examples below all right so it says that proc print data is equal to car where cylinders is missing for numeric field or for character field you can write proc print data is equal to cards where type is missing so before I go ahead on this example let me tell you that what is a missing value uh, in SAS so similarly as we have null in SQL server right null value null means nothing in same way in SAS suppose that if you leave anything blank okay let me show you uh, I will create a data set right now for you and then I'll be using a missing value into that 
so i have not told you yet that how to create a data set using data lines though i have shown you the examples so let me create a data i'll save it into the satya library and i'll set test i guess i already have a lot of test data sets over there so in satya oh great i don't have any test data set so test and then i will write input where i need to specify my variables let's say i will give variables as id then i will give variable id is to be integer so let me tell you that there are only two type of data types in sas normally if we talk about sql server or other tools which we use we have a lot of data types uh, available but in sas we have only two data types one is numeric and another is string so for numeric when we you know create data set we do not specify anything with the name of variable but for uh, you know character type or string type we need to use a dollar sign okay so let me use a dollar sign here like this and after this dollar you can specify the length let's say i have given 10 and i will end my statement so what it will do is uh, if i do not mention the length 10 so it will by default it will take 8 length for the name variable but i have given 10 so it will be up to 10 now i will write data lines and below data lines you can give the value for these variables id and name so let's say i have given one for id i will give a space and then i will give a name called satendra then i will take two then i'll take say john then i'll take three i i will leave it then i will go back okay i'll give it four and then i will give ram i'll leave it blank give it a space and then i will give jeff again i will give six space james seven thomas nine kathy ten alien okay so i have given various values here and when i will you know run this statement a data set will be created but you will not be sure that what is the order in which the values got inserted so right now it would be a confusion state for you and i would say that try to understand this as per your own and later on i will tell you that what is the mechanism which has been followed to insert the data and this is the main reason that is why i didn't tell you how to create data set using data lines yet so i'll be telling that later but right now i'm running this and you can see that what kind of data set it's gonna create for you it has created test and if i run proc print statement so you can see that it has created a data a set for you and this is the output right you can see it has done uh, you know blunder you might not understand that what it has done uh, to create this data set all right and right now i'm not going to tell you the logic that why it did like this but later on i will explain each and everything that why it did so basically if you look into this data set you got a dot here in case of id field and for all name columns you have spaces or blank right so i want to talk to you about missing value missing values 
okay so in sas we have you know depending on the data types we have two type of missing values it could be your numeric field numeric value or it could be your string all right so there could be two type of missing values either numeric or string string basically not i should use character here okay so for character and numeric uh, i shown you the data set this was the numeric field i have got a dot here and for character or string i have got blanks so this is exactly happens uh, when we get a missing value into the data set we get a missing value as a dot for integer field or numeric field and we get blanks blanks for you know a character or a string type of data or variables so this is exactly how you know missing values behave so i'll go back to the same example where i was this that proc print data is equal to car where cylinder is missing so basically i'm not going to specify a blank here or in the second example i'm not going to you know yeah in the first example i'm not going to be specifying a dot or in second example i'm not going to be specifying a missing uh, i mean blank at the place of that i'm going to write is missing okay so is is missing function will do the same job what a dot for numeric field or blank for character field is going to do but is null is null is again the same thing it says that is null as well as is missing can be used to output observation that has a missing value so let me check that whether we have a missing value okay i can use this missing value into this column or this so i will write the same statement that proc print data is equal to satya dot test and i will write where i'm just printing right i'm writing where a oh uh, sorry id is missing run if i run this statement let's see what i'm gonna get i will I have clicked on F8 and you can see that I have got only one record okay because there was only one record in the observation 5 where I have a missing value had it been a name column at the place of ID let me use that as well where name is missing so I can get the list okay so right now i have got nine records or nine observation i should say that i have got nine observation where name column is blank and we have got all the records so this is how you know you can use is null or is missing in your examples while subsetting a data set so now let's move to the next slide so contains is the condition it will check the value it will check the value of a variable to see whether the specified characters are found and will output only when the condition is true the condition is here a case sensitive why because you are going to give your value into inverted commas so for example con consider this code that proc print data is equal to cards where model contains convertible and run so this will output all the observation that have convertible included in the model name if any of has convertible it will not be included right so why it's convertible will not be included because in that case the case is different so it says that contains is case sensitive because you are writing that into inverted commas i told you already that if you are writing anything into you know inverted commas or single quotes that would be case sensitive and until unless if you are not writing that into inverted commas it will not be case, case sensitive so convertible right now contains works uh, you can say 
more or less same as like in SQL Server. We have like in SQL Server, and here we have contains. Con uh, you you could you must have used contains in Excel. So exactly the same way it it will work for you. So let me show. Let me go and create where. Okay. Uh, let me proc print data is equal to sas help dot cards I'll see where make content run now what make will contain that I will have to check it out from the data set because I really don't know okay let me say Pontiac okay P O N let's see it works or not I need to go to this this and I will write here P O N T okay now let's see that what I'm going to get I've run this statement and I have got the result I've got all the records where I have make as Pontiac all right so it worked for me now if I go back and check out into uh, let us suppose say model and then I will find grand okay I'll go here at the place of make I will change it to model and then contains and I will write here grand all right now let's see what it's gonna give I have run this query and it has given me all the records where grand word was used in the model variable so this is how your model variable works or you can not the exactly model variable the contains uh, function works for you all right now let's move okay let me show you one more thing as I said that convertible and convertible with the with the different case will be different thing for you so I'm gonna use grand as G in small or the lower case now let's see whether I'll be getting any record or not okay I've run that let's see what log window says log window says that no observation was selected from the data set as help dot cards there was zero observation read from the data set why because I have just changed the case of G here if I change it again I will get back all the records for the grand like eight observation all right so it would be clear now that contains is case sensitive and how basically it works for you okay now I'll be moving to the next slide which says like okay so like is again are uh, the same thing I told you that like as we uh, the contain is working or like works into the SQL server as well to explain like we need to use another data set with data taken uh, about some aircraft operated by Air India we create the following data set right they have taken an example where data airline length call sign 8 departure 10 arrival 10 now after that they are you know inputting them so input call sign departure arrival they have taken three variables call sign departure and arrival okay and then they have used data line and ran the program so let us create the similar program for us so that you know we can work with it so let me run the same program for you I'll go ahead and paste the code now if you okay uh, let me create this into Satya so that it will be you know available every time whenever I will look for it so Satya and if I want to use proc print and run 
I'll give the output here. Yes, this is the output for me. Now let's see that what they wanted to do with the example. Now the following code outputs all observation where value of variable call sign takes the value starting with AI89 followed by character. Over here our data gives the output as those observation having call sign values AI891 and AI892 from print data A India where call sign like this. So again uh, you are giving into inverted commas so this is also going to be case sensitive. Now let's say in the same data set I will make some changes. Data is equal to Satya dot is India now where call sign like inverted commas and I can let's say if I give Delhi AI because it's call sign. I'll, I have given 9. Let's see what I'm going to get. Oh no, I haven't got anything. It said that proc print data is equal to satya.a india where call sign like a9. Oh, so you can see that I have got errors that is in, highlighted into red color and it said that syntax error while parsing where clause and you can you know go through the log and you can find it out that what could be the wrong. It said that syntax error statement will be ignored. Why my statement will be ignored if I have written it, right? So you know that in SAS you need to terminate your statement using semicolon every time and if you're not using that it means you are creating a mistake. So I have used it again and I will run it. Let's see. Now what happens? It said that no observation was selected from this. So now the query ran, but it did not select any observation. Okay. So let's go back to the slide and what it said. It said that you need to use the call sign this. Okay. So how many variables you want? Let's see. I will give two. Okay. And then if I run, No observation was selected from data satya.air India. So it's not doing that for me. Let's see what I'm doing wrong. I've written proc print data is equal to satya.air India where call sign. Let me change like. AI okay I understand after A9 there are three variables that is why I didn't get any record okay so if I run this now I'm sure I will get two records okay so basically you need to mention that what is the width and if that width is available over there in the data set then definitely you will get output or otherwise you won't so this is how you know like works but you need to be sure of that the length. So let's do the same example with departure column. So now this time I'll be using departure at the place of call sign and I will use DE and for Delhi I have three one two three okay. Now let me run it and let's see whether I get any record or not. Okay I've got three records. So this is how you know you're gonna work with like operator. Now then after this okay it said that the following code outputs all observation where the value of variable call sign takes the value starting with AI8 followed by any two characters. 
hence two underscores over here our data gives five values as output all starting with ai8 so proc print data is equal to air india where call sign like ai8 and two spaces it means two underlines which you underscores you need to give and as soon as we they have given it they got five records or five observation as an output now earlier the underscore allows us to have one character that takes any value if we use the percentage symbol it can substitute any number of characters the following code will be out will output any number of digits as following ai the proc print data is equal to air india semicolon where call sign like ai okay now this is the best thing or i would say the best practice to use so at the place of giving those underlines or underscores had it been i would have given percentage sign i would have got all the records in one go and this is the best practice to know or you can follow the same all right i have got the same result but i have this use percentage now you need not to know whether how many spaces you need to use or how many characters you need to use so let's say if i say p i have just done p so i will get all the records whether it is port blair whether it is pune i will get both the records into my output so i have just run that and you can see that pune and port blair are there because this is exactly how it works now there is another thing let's say if i change it to b and i use a percentage sign before it and an a sign after it so it will give me all the records where b is in the departure name you can say mumbai alabad and port blair i've got four records and in all the records at the place of records i should say observation so in each observation we have b in it all right so this is how you can use like to filter out your data now it says the following will output only those that have departure ending with i right so they have used percentage sign before the character now it will give you all the records where departure is ending with this character note whenever using like with percentage try to keep the value enclosed in single quotes and not double quotes Do you remember why? Uh, later on, you will learn the macros, and you will see that if you use double quotes, the macro value will restore resolve, potentially leading to wrong output. So it is in the advanced SAS macros wherein will be writing a SAS variable into uh, double quotes and with the percentage sign. So to avoid that. we need to write our you know values in single quotes with the percentage sign here while using like all right so till now we we have you know uh, today we have covered between and and then we have used where a like contains so we have you know covered some of them uh, some of the you know major topics today to subset our data thank you till now we have seen that how to work with base sas software how you can import data from a raw text file from a excel file and how can you create a data set and how can you create sub data sets uh, from a existing data set we have gone through uh, various sas libraries which i shown you when i say libraries means we have already worked with sas help uh sas user we have a work library and we have created our own library uh so we have already seen that how we we work with a lot of uh, objects in sas software today what we are going to cover is uh, about input buffer pdv and how we can compile and execute our code in sas so i know that input buffer and pdv are new terms to know but we'll be going through all these and we'll discuss how exactly these impact our you know day to day working with sas software and base sas so uh, let's get started all right so uh, all of you know like uh, when we write a sas program what exactly happens 
let's say uh, I'll talk about uh, just a simple thing. Uh, right, let me go to the SAS helps. And here you can see that we have a lot of data sets. So I'll just write a simple proc uh, program. Let's say data. And I'll give it a name and I'll try to save that in work dot air and then I'll say set sas help dot air and I'll say run so it's very simple program and you know that what I'm going to do here is I'm trying to create another data set called work and wherein I'll be uh, you know what I'll be doing I will just create a simple copy of sas help dot air into work library with the same name called air. So as soon as I you know run this program, you go to the log window and you can see. All right. So uh, what you can see here is that uh, we have got the warning though. Uh, it says that there were 144 observation read from the data set sashelp.air. The data set work.air has 144 observation and two variables. Data statement used totals process time, the real time and CPU time. So it gave you the complete information that a data set been created. But do you know exactly that what happens when you write such a program? Right? There are two steps in which or after that this program get completed right so this is what this slide is talking about that uh, whatever program you write or whatever data step you write in SAS or base SAS what happens uh, the base is uh, the data step pro gets processed into two phases the first phase is compilation and another is execution so when I say compilation compilation is nothing but whatever code we have written uh, as it happens in every I you know programming language first of all whatever code you write that gets compiled and the second step happens that it gets executed all right so in same way whenever we write the SAS program it gets compiled first of all in the first phase it gets compiled and in the second phase whatever code code is compiled it gets executed right so uh, it, it may happen that sometimes we get some error in the compilation phase as well. So uh, in compilation phase, whatever errors we get in compilation phases, those are basically nothing but syn syntactical error, right? So if there is any, any syntactical error, that will get caught in compilation phase only. And that shows that there is a problem or the, your program, whatever program you have written, that's not correct. So if you get any error in compilation phase, that shows that the program which you have written is not written in a correct order. But uh, like sometimes you get errors in execution phase, right? That shows your program, whatever program you have written, the SAS code you have written, that is correct. But if you still got a pro problem or the you know error in execution phase, so those are basically because of the data. Right. So because of the data, whatever error you get, that happens in execution phase. But due to programmatical error, syntactical error, whatever error or warning you get in compilation phase, that shows that your program is not correct. Right. So it says that under SAS help, under the heading data step processing, the complete flowchart is given on what happens on backend when the data step is processed right now it says that compilation phase during the compilation phase SAS checks the syntax of data step statements as I already told you then it creates an input buffer so you remember in the topic I said that we'll be talking about input buffer then we'll talk about PDV so here is a term called input buffer to hold the current data file record that is being processed and then SAS creates a program data vector this is nothing but the PDV to hold the current SAS observation observation means a record or row then it creates the descriptor portion of the output data set right so let's talk in detail about this compilation phase right 
So during the compilation phase, SAS checks the syntax of the data step statement. So this is the first step what SAS base does. That it checks for each and every syntax whatever you have written in your program. It checks for that, validates whether the program which you have written is correct or not. Right? Now I'm specifically talking about the data step right now. Because the first slide is about the data step. So we are going to work on the data step right now and I'm talking about the compilation phase that in first step it checks for the syntax or the program whatever you have written. The number two, it creates an input buffer to hold the current data file record that is being processed. So uh, now let me tell you, uh, let me just go back to the SAS system here and I'll click on this A data set. It's going to open the file of the A data set. Now here you can see that we have two variables, date and another is international air travel. That is in thousand. Okay. In date we have a date in MMMDD format and then we have international air travel in thousand. That may be the amount. Uh, let me column attribute. I have just double clicked on it. It says its name is air. Okay, so I guess this this may be the distance or this may be the you know the amount in dollar or thousand. I don't, I'm not sure what exactly it is, but yes, we have two variables here and number of observation. When I say number of observation, means we have in total. 144 observation in the data set. So let us say the program which I have written here that is going to replicate the same data set into the work library. And this is exactly what the program I have written. Now you can see that I have written data work.air and then set sas help.air. So from uh, this I have set a data set called air from the sas help and it's going to replicate the same data set into the work library. Okay. Now what ex actually happens in the back end? Whenever we will run this program, first of all, as a first step, according to the slide, that SAS program is going to check the syntax, whatever I have written. So once if it will validate the each and every syntax of the program, what I have written, if that is good to go, then SAS will go to the next step. And what is the next step is as per the slide that it checks the it creates an input buffer to hold the current data file record that is being processed. So what happens the data set which we have here SAS selects each row one by one. So in a one go it processes it process one row and for each variable it creates an input buffer. It means it allocates that data that that record into the temporary I would say yeah input buffer is nothing but a temporary memory allocation which happens in the back end. Okay. So it allocates each record with a temporary memory allocation or what it does that it allocates that record into the temporary memory of SAS for the time being. Right. Once it creates or it allocates that in the memory that record into the memory once that record is fulfilled, that complete record gets shifted into the another destination like in the work dot air. Okay. So let me just open a Excel here so that I can tell you in detail that what exactly happens in the back end. Okay. Just give it a minute. Let the Excel be open in my system. We call it what happens in the black box. Now black box is nothing but the back end of SAS system. Okay, here we go. So let's say we have two variables A and B and we have you know number of records.
here we go these are the variables and we have number of observations here so whenever I will try to create you know duplicate or replica of this data set in data set into the SAS space so what will happen uh, let me do the see, see okay we have four observation so what SAS will do as soon as you know I will write the similar kind of code with whatever I have written here the data work dot air then SAS help dot air so what it will do first of all it will you know it will observe that what type of variable I have if it is a character or if it is a numerical it will you know similar kind of depending on those uh, data types it will create an input buffer okay that will be in the back end it will create f for A and for B similar kind of variables it will allocate the space for these variables into the memory of SAS or not exactly memory of SAS the system okay in the back end and first of all it will create the spaces and then it will fill the values one by one and as soon as this step is complete what it will do it will shift these values into the destination what I have given to the SAS when I say destination means in my case that, that is a work library right this is the first step what it does in the first go it will do this this process now the iteration goes back to the second serial number and then it picks the next two values it overwrites the original ones not basically overwrites it deletes them from from the input buffer and then fits it into the same you know input buffer or the memory allocation what is happening for the temporary for the temporary okay and then All right, so as soon as the first record gets shifted to the destination, just after that, as I already said that it works record by record, right? So as soon as you can see that first record got shifted to the destination, uh, like the second record, the counter or the pointer goes to the second record and uh, the input buffer which was created for the first record got emptied and then the values for the second record get shifted into that input buffer okay once the record is completed here what how is basically it happens it happens for each uh, variable at a time right first of all the value for variable a will be shifted here and then the variable for value for variable b will shift here and as soon as both the you know the complete row got shifted the complete row get shifted to the destination and again it will get emptied right now next the pointer goes to the third row and then it will shift the values to the input buffer so similarly one by one like each record gets shifted to the destination via input buffer right like how it works basically this information uh, so what happens that each line is processed in order from top to bottom so when I say top to bottom uh, so like first of all uh, the serial number one it will start from serial number one or the observation number one to observation four and then top to bottom means first of all a variable A will be shifted and then variable B will be shifted so similarly one by one by uh, you know shifting values from each for each variable into uh, input buffer and then from input buffer to the memory it gets shifted to the destination right this input buffer is nothing but called PDV right so PDV is program data vector okay this is just a called program data vector but again uh, this is the same thing uh, where it saves the input buffer for the intermediate period or time period right and at the end it creates the descriptor portion of the output so descriptor portion I told you in the beginning that what basically descriptor portion is 
in order to see that again we can go back to the SAS environment and I will just write another proc let's say proc data and then I will say data is equal to work dot a proc I need to give the name of proc that is proc content and I will say run and as soon as I will run this proc you will see the output okay something went wrong here let me close it and I need to go to the log window and let's see it's a the procedure okay content it's a contents proc contents now it's showing me running let's see that what happens in a minute as soon as the complete proc will run you will you know get some output and what basically I want to show that it will open another window with the results now here you can say this is the proc contents and what it is telling you about that what is the name of data set what member type of this data is how many variables are there how many observations are there indexes is there any index observation length is it compressed or not when what is the date when it was created what is the data representation right so it is a complete information about uh, the data set so proc contents give you the information about the data set and this is nothing but the descriptor portion of data set so I have already told you in some other session that there are two you know parts of data sets are there number one the data and number two the descriptor portion so data portion has the actual data for a data set but the descriptor portion has the information about the data or you can say the metadata so what happens once the PDV is created the uh, created it creates the descriptor portion of the data okay so that is the last step for the compilation we have finished till here we have finished the compilation phase of a data step and as we move to the next step which is called execution so what happens in execution that iteratively inputs the individual records as I already told that it works from top to bottom in case of data error it writes an error message to the log and continues to the next record right so if there I mean if you get an er error in compilation phase your program will not at all run because there is a programmatical error but if there is a data error then definitely for that particular record or for particular observation your program may not run but it will as soon as the uh, the iteration will move to the next record it will run successfully so the execution do not or does not stop till all the records are read however if there are mistakes in the record that will appear confusing and there would be I mean uh, the log would be created for them right under files we have a raw data file called revenue revenue 2 let's read the data using the in file and input statement similar to what we did last time see what answer we get okay so data revenue 2 let me just search for this data content so revenue 2 you can see here this is the data revenue 2 and this is the data which we have here in the file okay it has the uh, location name then freight then di uh, direct so just give it a minute and I'm going to just shift it to the or move the data to the SAS just give it a minute okay so I'll be writing the same program here as we have in the uh, PPT so let me just close this file and I'll go back to my slide this is the program which I really want to write data revenue to okay before writing this what I can do is I will create another location where I'll be saving my uh, you know the data set which I am going to create 
So let's say in this folder only, I will create another folder and I'll give it a name called Satya. And now I can create a library with this name. So I need to go to the here. I will write lib name. I will give it a name called Satya2. Or I can say it Satya. And then I need to give the location name. And as soon as I will you know run this, it will create a library name for me. So I will go to the log and it says that was successfully assigned as follows. So if I go here in the explorer, you can see this Satya has already been assigned. Now whatever a data set I am going to create now, let's say Satya dot revenue to and now this is the time where you need to concentrate that how I am going to import the data of this text file the revenue to into SAS okay now just imagine this text file here and the code which is written here in the SAS environment then it says data satya dot revenue to satya dot revenue to this is the second level of name it means the first name is the library and the second name is the name of the data set which I have given here. Then length hub $15. So hub is nothing but the location. So like Frankfurt or London, that is the name of hub. $15, it is the format. If you remember the session which I took about format and in format. So the length uh, regarding any variable is given after the dollar sign. So this is what I have done, like I have given the length as 15 for hub. The another thing is freight, so I have given a length of 15 again to source. Then type, is it direct or indirect or other, so the length is 10. And then revenue, what was the amount of revenue which was generated. So for that I have given length as 8. So first of all I have given length, I can you know define the format in this way. Or for each variable I can decide the variable later uh, uh, the format later on as well now after that I need to give the location where my file is located so for that I need to go to the location this is the location where my file is saved I'll go back to SAS system I'll change this location I'll change it here only now then I need to give it in double quotes and then DLM, DLM is nothing but the delimiter which I have used so you can see into the file, the text file, there it is commas separated. So that is why delimiter is nothing but the comma. Okay and then input, input variables, the name of variables like hub source type and revenue as soon as I will you know run this statement you can see that the revenue to got created here in the contents of Satya so if I double click on it you can see the same kind of data set would have been created here but unfortunately we don't have the revenue values you can see that I don't have revenue values I am getting missing all across okay you may know it because the value which I had here uh, when I was you know giving the program writing the program I have given it as a revenue and I didn't say that it is where uh, var uh, character so it by default took as a numerical value but the data which I had was formatted as in dollar so that is why it it didn't import that and there is an error what I can do uh, is that I can try to import this in form of character Let's see that what it's going to do now. It will override the existing data set. I have double click here. And now you can see some of the values. So this is how basically you know it creates. But again you can see that the, my values were comma separated. So that is why you are not getting the full value here. We will you know look for the other provisions how to import this del delimited value but right now what I am going to do is I wanted to show you that how uh, this uh, 
PDV and input buffer works here in this situation. So you can see here the same situation what we were talking about that when we imported this data everything works fine except the last column. Now the reason that SAS by default using the in file and input statement can read only standard numeric data. But the data which was there in the file is not standard right it is formatted. So it is non-standard data and if it is not a standard data then data with the dollar sign in the column is non-standard numeric data and by default when there is a missing data at the end of the row SAS does not the following. So basically you can see if it is non-standard SAS will not assume it as the required format and it will treat as a missing. So that is why in the first case when I didn't use the dollar sign here I'll go back with the same again. I'll run this program and I will this time I will write proc print data is equal to satya dot revenue to and run. So as soon as I'll be running this you can see the data is everything right all right except the last column because all across you can see the missing value in the last column. Okay. So this is exactly what he was talking about. So such a situation where you know uh, it misses the last column. Okay. We will uh, exactly not this because here the reason was that it was the formatted data. So uh, that is why it didn't accept any value. But by default when there is a missing data at the end of the row. Suppose that there uh, had it been that you didn't have data in the last column. So it would have loaded the next record to finish the observation or writes a note to the log. So the miss over option prevents SAS from loading a new record when the end of the current record is reached. Okay. So this is exactly what happens in case of miss over. In file path file name is over. If SAS reaches the end of the row without finding any value for all fields variable without the values are set to missing. What happens to the back end, right? This, this is exactly what we were talking about. But let's see, uh, let's take an example of miss over first. So when I say example of miss over, let me write a data lines. Let's say I will write data. Then I would write satya dot test. And here I will write input and I'll take a uh, variable as let's say name no I will not take name let's say I will say a b c three variables and then I will say data lines for a let's say one then two here I will say three Here I will take 5, no 5, 6, here I will take only 3, then 5, then 6, comma 7, comma 8, let's say 7, comma 8, comma 9, and then again 9, comma 0, and then 1, okay. I'm going to run this program and you need to observe that what exactly is SAS is going to do, right? So I'll say later on after this I will write proc print data is equal to satya dot test and run. Okay, you can see here this is the basic difference which I wanted to show. Yes, look at this data now. What is happening? Like first of all, I gave three values for all the variables like A, B and C. So it's A is equal to 1, B is equal to 2 and C is equal to 5. We got the values for all variables. Then similarly, the same thing happened for the third row as well. Sorry, second row. 
that's 256. But for the third record, we have 35, but for C, we don't have any value in third record. So what SAS did, it went through that, it filled the values like 3 and 5, and then we have got 6 here. Where it gets the 6 from? It got the 6 from the third value, right? Sorry, from the next row, 6. And then after that, it skipped 7 and 8. We don't have the 7 and 8 in the data set. It frequently, I mean directly moved to the next row. I told you while uh, using the input buffer, if the record gets completed into the input buffer, the SAS pointer automatically moves to the next row. So, if this 6 got shifted to the previous row, I mean at this place, and the 7 and 8 got skipped. Now the SAS pointer starts from here 789 so we have 789 here and then again 90 and 1 H had it been a uh, 5 here it would have been skipped so let me show you that once again i'll run this program and now you can see that we have 5 here but that got skipped we don't have that in the data now, the situation comes if I use miss over here. As per the slide, you can see that if we use miss over with the help of, I mean, in with in, using in file. So let's say I'm going to use miss over. I can use here in file data lines and then miss over. Let's see that what it's gonna do now. Okay, so this is the new result which I have got, but as soon as I have used miss over, you can see. that the data which we have entered like 1 to 5 we have 1 to 5 then we have 2 5 6 we have 2 5 6 then 3 5 and then missing value in the inputs input statement similarly we have 3 5 and then the missing value in the result so by using miss over we have overcome this challenge where there was no value for a particular variable similarly we are getting a missing value in the data set. So I was about to talk that if we, you know, what happens in case of PDV, if suppose that we are not using miss over, then automatically it uses the uh, value from the next row at the place of missing value and skips the remaining values, right? I know that it may be a bit difficult to understand, but the main crux is here, right? It fills these three values for these, the input buffer. Uh, I'll show in Excel, right? Let's say that I have these values for A, B, and C. So as soon as we run this code, what it does is creates an input buffer for A, B, and C in PDV. Let's say this is the final destination and these are the input buffer. Let's take it as input buffer and this is the final data set. Okay. Now what happens in case of input buffer? So as soon as we will run this program. Uh, this first values get shifted into the input buffer for A1, for B2, for C5. And as soon as these values get filled, it uh, that SAS identifies their uh, descriptor portion. 
it shifts these values into the final data like this and then it empties these values now for each input buffer or the location they have the kind of data step or the data type they should have now it moves to the next row it fills 2524a 54b and 64c everything goes well it shift these values to the second row of final data and then again empties these values right when is it empties it assigns a missing value in each field right now what happens it moves to the the iteration moves to the third row now here what we have is that for a we have 3 for b we have 5 but for c we don't have anything so it directly moves to the next row which is 6 right so it fills in the 6 here if we are not using miss overs okay in case of no miss overs it fills this situation right it moves these values to the final file and then again it fills the missing value in case here and we were here at the 6 right the input buffer got filled so the pointer moves to the next row then it skips these 6 and 7 it goes back to the next row fills 7 8 9 and it works for the next iteration in the same way but what happens in case uh, let me just run it for other rows as well it then empties it then it moves to the next row it fills the values like 9 0 then 1 from the next row and it fills these values into the final data set so this way it creates the complete data set without miss over and we get the value for each variable but what happens in case of miss over if we use miss over with the data lines so what will happen in case of miss over in first case uh, let me create like this in first case it will fill, uh, fill the three values like 1 2 and 5 it will move them here empty the value move to the next row it will fill 2 5 6 input buffer gets filled in it shifts the values to the final file then again it empties it's a complete cycle which you know gets followed in every time now it moves to the third row that 3 5 it gets over there so it will insert 3 and then 5 we are using miss over so it will skip it will accept missing value because it, it does not have you know third value for the third variable in third row so it will just pick these values accept these values move to the next row empty them again missing 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 and then capture the third row next row that is six seven eight it will fill in six seven eight in it gets completed it will move to the data set empty them move to the next pointer seven eight nine so seven eight nine follow the same process frame cycle moves the values to the data set empty them here and move to the next row and again it will encounter only 9 and then 0 nothing is there for the third variable so it will treat that as missing shift the values in the data set and go back to the input buffer then missing 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 release the memory and then it will go to the last row and it will find only 1 and a 5 and then missing value for the third variable and then it will shift these and then finally as if not like there is no record in the data set the input buffer will get released I mean it will not hold any value 
so by you know following with miss over and without miss over these two type of data set got created now if you go back to the sas data sets and the results which we had you can compare they would have similar kind of result you can see here this is the first without miss over you have 1 to 5 2 5 6 3 5 6 7 8 9 and 9 0 1 and this record set got created or the result got created when we were using missing value or miss over so you can see that we have three miss value, missing values and rest the values which we have here in the data are exactly the same we planned for. So this is how the data set got created by using miss over and without miss over. But following exactly the PDV and the input buffer that how SAS allocates the temporary input buffer and how it holds the values to pass to the final data set. Now what happens in the backend? We have already seen that what happens, but let's go through the slide that when reading the reading uh, from a raw data file when uh, and reading from the SAS data set. So basically there is small difference, right? Reading the data file, SAS data file would be easier for SAS because uh, it need not to create the descriptor portion again. But for uh, when reading the data, raw data file SAS need to create the descriptor portion again okay so there is you know the the major difference which is there between these two processes now consider to example the raw data file and the SAS data set we have similar kind of function or the program written here let's move to the next file when when, when reading the, from the raw data file the following is done in the backend by the statements so just read that what what is happening in case of compilation phase, data checks. Now, first of all, we are doing it from the raw data file, right? So it checks the syntax in the compilation phase, creates the new variable, defines the length of new variable, creates the input buffer, creates the PDV, and run creates the descriptive portion of the data set or output data set. So this is what ha all happens in compilation phase. And then in execution, data creates the data set, in file locate the path, input it moves the raw data file to the input buffer from it moves to the PDV and then run implicitly output implicit return okay so from input buffer it creates PDV and then from PDV it creates the actual data set so this is what all happen in case of raw data file but when we process the same with help of from an existing data set what is going to happen let's see that so when reading from a SAS data set, the following is done in the backend by these statements. The data checks the syntax, right? Locates the input data set, creates PDV, creates keep and drop flags or drop, create runs the descriptive portion of the output data set. So this is exactly what happened in case of raw data file. But in case of uh, you know uh, SAS data set what it happens that data initializes the PDV sets the data transfer from input data set to the PDV keeps drop and run creates flags and it automatically you know executes the program and create the final data set so there is a I would say if I talk about the optimization view or the time saving then definitely creating a data set from existing data set is easier less resources are used and it's easily created right in less time now question when SAS reads from an Excel file and creates an output SAS data set what rules does it follow in the backend reading the data from raw data file reading the SAS data set a completely different method what do you think your answer would be depend on the understanding what you have done but let me just tell you it follows the first one that reading data from the raw data file but again you need to think that why it is happening and why I said that is the raw data file not the SAS data set or a complete different method okay let's move another question um, to read the raw data file containing standard values into SAS data set we use the following syntax we have already done it and several times and we have created several data sets, data sets by using such a uh, example or the raw data or the uh, 
data lines. Okay, in this case the code is the following. This is the same code which I have, you know, we saw in the previous slide and they have created this data set. Okay, uh, let's slightly talk about the delimiter that what a delimiter is that a space blank is a default delimiter in SAS. So you may remember that I was using just any space between these numbers. So that is default delimiter. I can use comma, I can use colon, I can use any specific a special character and I can specify that as a delimiter but space is a default delimiter in case of SAS. So a space blank is a default delimiter the DLM option can be added in the in file statement to specify an alternate delimiter. Okay, DLM is nothing but the delimiter. If apart from space you are using any other delimiter, comma, colon or any other number, you can specify that. So the example is given here that in file path and file name and then DLM is equal to in quotes you can give the delimiter. Like they have given comma here. So this is exactly you can you know uh, give the data like this okay list input the uh, this is the another way of inputting the data into SAS from the raw data file that the method for inputting text data into we just saw is called list input and the variable and values are input in the list and they are all standard value recall that all standard values are values that SAS reads directly without any special instructions we have done it multiple times so there is nothing new for you by default the length of character variable would be 8 point to be noted that by default the length of character variable would be 8 bytes in case we want to accommodate bigger values we need to explicitly define the length of variable and we talked it about in the format that we can specify the length whatever we want but by default SAS takes it as Eight, right now the syntax here is given like health sorry length variable 1 and then length 1 so length 1 if you do not specify anything it would automatically be 8 and if you are going to specify like 15 here dollar and then 15 so it's gonna accommodate 15 byte space in the system okay our text file has the following dates in this format like MMDD YY format how can you read this data so I have already covered this in the previous sessions. You need to think about it. How and what in format or format you are going to use to import this data. Let's, this is the PDV I have, we have already talked about. Let me show you that how you can see the, the PDV basically how is that works. So I just need to give here as put underscore call underscore. Let's see whether it's working or not. Okay, I'll tell you that how exactly it works, but right now it's not working. Let me go back to the previous example here, this one. I just need to use this here. Okay, here you can see uh, this is nothing but the PDV basically, right? 
it's it tells you the values for a b c all three variables and uh, with that you have got three system defined variables like underscore error underscore and then underscore n underscore underscore n underscore is nothing but the observation or the iteration number so we had five records we have got six iterations right in case of error underscore until unless it is zero the uh, because it is for each row or the observation so it has only two values zero or one if it is underscore error underscore is zero it means there is no error if it well its value is one it means there is a error in that particular record its value cannot go more than one okay it will always be zero or one one indicates that there is an error a zero indicates that there is no error now rest that uh, you have all missing values in, in in pdv so as i already uh, i have already told you that when we uh, use input buffer and pdv so what basically happens that you by default you get missing values in the pdv because it uh, gets reset after every iteration to the missing value and this is exactly what you are getting in the pdv right so in order to see the pdv nothing but you need to use put underscore all underscore in your program and you will exactly get the pdv printed into the log window so put is for to print into the log window and all underscore all is for all the variables which are involved in the processing so here uh, we have you know all the variables these are the two system defined variables error underscore error and n un underscore n underscore and these are the three variables which were there in my data okay so five observations six iterations and zero errors three variables this is how my data set got created now let's move to the next slide okay let's let's go through this slide once more that the pdv is temporary file is stored in the memory of a computer it is like a transist whenever sas data sets are created the pdv works in the backend the content of a pdv changes in every iteration and they can be viewed by entering the code what is that code that's put underscore all underscore the content of a pdv when using put underscore all underscore are viewed in a log window after the data set is created the pdv is deleted automatically right so when the data set is created first of all it the values are set to default that is missing and then the pdv is deleted automatically so this is what when we you know create we created uh, data set from the raw data file or the existing data set let's see the another case is creating sas data sets from existing sas data set we have already seen that what functionality it uses in the backend but let's see again both the processes would be involved whether it is a compilation phase or execution phase compilation is every uh, every time used whenever we create new program and then execution this is what we have already seen okay so in the compilation phase check uh, step 1 and step 2 you have you can you know go through and check it out okay now comparison is over we move to the execution so basically uh, if i talk about here you have you know the four observation and that is why they have given the compilation step for for each variable or the four each observation basically similarly the compilation we have already talked in detail that how it's going to look like and what values you are going to see in the input buffer and pdv if you want you can you know go step by step so let me go back to the log window once again whatever values you are looking at the slide right now it's nothing but these values right how the values are being set to missing and how you know the error and underscore variables are getting so you can see that automatic variable underscore error underscore and underscore n underscore are dropped from the output data set though those are not moved to the data set the final data set which we create since end of file is not raised iteration 3 next completed the same way okay various steps we have already followed these
okay so in all you know uh, these data set or uh, while creating various data sets we have already covered the following scenarios like creating data set from existing SAS data set copying entire data set changing order of variable or keep drop similarly the combination of length and keep drop will be will work with the length first creating the variable and keep and drop being applied right so the major task of today what we covered was to see that how input buffer pdv are working and then we saw that how miss over is being used miss over is also a very important command similarly we have other like uh, similarly miss over we have other uh, commands as well so we'll be looking at them as well in later on in uh, later sessions but we saw that how to create you know data set from existing data set and then we saw that how to create data set from raw file hi everyone uh, we are going to cover today uh, the keep and drop variable statement then we'll be covering labels and after that if time permits we'll be covering formats so just to let you know that uh, in our previous call uh, in our previous session we covered uh, a lot of statements to subset and read data sets how to create data sets and we use set statement and copy proc uh, I told uh, in the last session that we will be covering label and formats but due to you know the time constraint we were not able to cover them in you know third and fourth chapter so we'll be uh, doing uh, label and formats today but before that I would like to tell you uh, that how to use keep and drop variables before I tell you that how to use them it's very necessary to tell you that what exactly these things are right so keep and drop variables and where we use it so it's really important to know that where to use these keep and drop variable uh, so let's move to the slide it says that drop statement specifies the name of variable to omit from output data set right so before I read anything here let me show you that what and how we use variables okay so don't get confused with the term variable variable is nothing but the variable uh, which we call columns in SAS or basically the columns which we call variable in SAS so uh, you must be you must remember what I have keep telling that the term which we use column in other databases or in other systems here we use variable for them right we call variable and for rows in other systems we call them here observation all right so I'm talking about the variable it means the columns in SAS now let me show you some example first so that I can you know connect with the topic which we are going to cover today and it would be really uh, I mean it would be helpful for you to you know understand that what exactly I'm talking about so let me just show you a proc print I'll be writing data and let me see that whether I have uh, my data sets which I created yesterday in SAS Satya library yes I have a lot of data sets here so I will mention Satya dot and then I will say let, let us say subset 3 okay so subset 3 semicolon and then I will run so as of now like I'm going to run this statement you can see that I will be getting all the variables available in my data set so subset 3 uh, I guess which which we created out of OR sales from SAS help library and we had uh, you know a lot of variables or columns in this data sets so as soon as I have run this I have got you know all the variables from the data set whether it is year quarter product line uh, product group quantity product category uh, then profit and then total retail price so we have got all the variables here but if in case uh, like just a question 
Let us suppose I don't want to see all the columns here. I don't want to see all the variables here. You want to see only some of the variables, some of the columns. Let us see you, you just want to see, uh, you know, the product group and the, and the quantity, just two variables. What will you do? It's a very good question. And basically, we are going to use var keyword here. Okay, so let us see that how I'm going to use var keyword. Uh, so I'll go here into the SAS window. Okay, and into the editor window. Now at the place of running uh, or submitting the whole statement, I will submit var and then I will give name of the column. So let us say product underscore group and quantity. Right? So I have mentioned the name of two variables and I will terminate my statement. So product group is the first column and another would be quantity. So I'm going to submit these statements and we will see that what. So you can see that I have got only two variables now in the output. First one is product group and another is quantity, right? If you want, we can add a third column as well. But I don't remember that how many columns were there. Let me you know scroll back to the previous result. So we have, you know, let's say profit. OK, I'm going to add profit in my list. I have added now three variables. And I'll run it. So you can see I've got three variables in output. First is product group. Second is quantity and third is profit, right? So this is the way how we have been using var keyword. Var is nothing but variable that how many columns you want to see, right? So in similar way, in the same way, we can, you know, like while creating a data set, we can use, you know, the, this var keyword. So let's say I told you that how to create data sets. So first of all, you need to write data, then the library reference, and then the name of your output data set. So let's say I will give it as, mm, let's say, sub underscore, I will say, let's say sales. Okay. This is a uh, sub, let's say subset four. Okay. This is the name which I have given to the output data set. Now, set and then the input data set which I am going to take. So I'll be taking input data set as the same. SAS help dot OR sales. Okay. And now I will use this statement. So it means it's gonna create Okay, let me run this and I'll be getting some error as the var is highlighted in red. So how to overcome this challenge, which I really want to do, but SAS is not permitting me to do. Okay, you can go back to the log window and you will see. First of all, you will get that statement is not valid or it is used for used out of proper order means something is wrong into this statement here. So you might got have a gist that what exactly I wanted to do, right? I wanted to pass only three variables into the subset four data set, right? If you read the log in a proper way, it would say that SAS data set Satya four may be incomplete when this step was stopped was zero observation and eight variables. So if you'll go back to the, you know, library Satya, I have got this data set being created, but if I click on it, you will get error or a pop up. So it's opening. So I have got this message here that data set has zero observation, but it will tell you the eight variables, which we got into the log window as well. So that's pretty clear. But the thing which I really wanted to do by writing that code that I wanted only three 
variables to go into this data set so now how to do that this is what we are going to cover in today's topic that is keep and drop okay so how we are going to use that and what is the meaning of keep and drop keywords into the statement let's now read into the slide okay so drop statement specifies the name of variables to omit from the output data set okay so drop and then variable list variable list contains the variable you want to exclude separated by blanks and keep statement specifies the name of variables you want to write to output data set and keep variable list variable list contains the variable you want to include separated by blanks so it's pretty easy and it's as easy as it sounds drop if you want to exclude keep if you want to include into the output data set right drop if you want to exclude variables separated by blanks keep which you want to include into the output data set right further i'll be talking about that we can use these keywords with both input and output but if we are using it with output data set then it will have exact meaning as we are reading right now that if you you are using drop with output data set it means you are excluding if you are using keep with output data set it means you are including but opposite thing happens when you use the same keyword with input data set so for example if you are using you know drop columns with input data set so it's gonna drop those variables and include rest of them and keep keep will include those columns so again i mean it, it is the same thing it is just one of the smaller confusion that whether we use with input or output it's going to do the same thing right but it would be very clear once we will take some examples right so let's move to the next slide it says that example let's consider an input data set with the following variables it says year movie name hero heroine villain janner and box office if you use the following code the drop your movie name hero drop sorry drop year movie name hero heroine and then output data set will have the following variables villain janner box office if you use the following code keep movie and these all these things then output data set will have these followings so let's do the same thing with our example so right now what i have said that uh, data set so let's say that i'll write keep okay keep these three columns now let's see that what's going to happen in our output data set so i will write again proc print and then run i'm not giving the name of data set it will uh, print the latest created data set for me i've used keep now you can see that my data set have three variables okay but before that let me go to the log window so that it would be clear that it does have created so now you can see that there were 912 912 observation read from the data set sas help dot or sales and the data set satya dot subset 4 has 912 observation and three variables so you got to know that how what exactly we did we used keep and these three columns right now i'll be doing the just opposite of this i'll copy the same code go below and then i will write drop okay so now it should behave just opposite of that whatever we did right away right in this the example we used keep and then product quantity and profit sorry product group quantity and profit so we got these three things into the resultant data set but now i'm using drop this means what i'm going to do is i will drop these three variables and i will get rest of the 
variables available in the OR sales data set present in SAS help library. So now you can see that I have got one, two, three, four and five variables here and each of the variable which I mentioned in my code that product group, quantity and profit those got dropped from the list. Alright, so it would be very easy now that how to use them. Now before I move ahead just let me tell you that right now the keep and drop statement which we have used we have used them as a statement. There is one th thing in SAS called options. I have not told you or the describe that what an option is. When I'll be telling that what an option is, I'll tell you that how to use keep and drop with options, how to use them. Okay, so I'll be telling you that later. But right now th that we have used keep and drop as a statement in SAS program. All right, so let's move to the next slide. Now type the following code and see how to keep and drop statements differ. So again, they have, you know, used the same example which we have just done. So there is no need to do it again because we have already covered all these examples. So I'll be moving to the next slide now. That's assignment. It says create an input data set called cards as a replica of sashelp.cards. Subset only those observations that have the make given by Audi, BMW, Chevrolet, Ford, Honda, Hyundai, Mercedes-Benz, Suzuki, Toyota and Volvo. Within that filter to keep only the vehicle drivetrain as front wheel drive, keep only these variables make, model, type, engine. The end data set must have 95 observation and 4 variables alone. So let us do it together so that you will understand that exactly what should we do and how we are going to do it in a SAS program. So we will have to write a big SAS program now. So uh, in order to do that, let me just first of all check whether we have this data set in our uh, that SAS help dot cards or not. So I'll say data is equal to SAS help dot cards. And I'll run this statement, it will tell me that whether I have this data set available or not because it depends whether, uh, I mean, it depends on uh, the time when you would be installing SAS into your system. So it is possible that you may not have this data set available on your system. All right. So I have just ran uh, this and I have got the output on the output report viewer window. So it means I have this cards data set available in SAS help library. Now let's go to the problem. The problem is that to create an input data set, create an input data set cards as a replica of SAS help dot cards. So I'll be writing a data step first of all. I'll create that into Satya and I'll say cards. You can see that I already have a cards in Satya a library. But what I'm going to do is let me create a cards too. Okay. And then I'll, I'll give the set statement. It says that subset only those observation were make given by this. Okay. So first of all, I need to write the same statement, which is set sas help dot cards and run. So this is going to create me the exact replica of SAS cards data set into Satya library with cards to name. But I don't have to do it. There is a proper condition what I need to follow is that I need to create subset of only those observations where make is given by these. Okay. So I will have to mention these things into a condition where make 
and I guess you must be remember it. You must have remember it that we used in that how to use it in. First thing is Audi. Second thing is BMW. So BMW. Third thing is Chevrolet. So it's gonna be Chevrolet. right then we have Ford then we have Honda then we have Mercedes Benz then we have Suzuki then we have Toyota and the last but not the least we have Volvo okay with this what else they want within that filter to keep only the vehicle driven train as front wheel drive okay with this they want to keep only those vehicles where drive train as front wheel drive so i will have to write next condition and drive train i guess drive train is one of the variables here is equal to front wheel drive I will have to write this in exact case drive okay now my statement ends here but they still want something that to keep only these variables make model type and engine size so I will have to write the keep statement as well keep I will have to give these variables like make space model space type space engine underscore size and then I will terminate my statement so I have put all the conditions here as they were, as they were required into, into the code now I will run this statement and let's see what happens. Oh, it ran and very fast. Okay. Now as per the result, it says the end data set must have 95 observation and four variables. So let me go to the log window first and then I will check that what happened here. It said that there was zero observation read from the data set says help dot cards where zero oblique asterisk and obviously false where clause okay so what it said that uh, there was some problem with the code which i have written now what could be wrong with this that i need to check okay okay so the variable engine size in drop keep or rename list was never been referenced so engine size there was a problem with engine size what i have written here engine size is the spelling correct e n g i n e underscore size it says that some problem is something is wrong with this engine size I will have to go back into the SAS help data set or uh, data and I will have to check okay engine size is not with underscore it says you can see that here so I will have to you know change that into my code that it's not with underscore so, see these are the things which you need to be sure of I have just deleted the underscore and now let's see that whether I'm able to run it again it gave me some pro some error 
that there was zero observation read from the data set this okay now earlier it gave me warning that the variable engine size in this list have never been referenced but this time it's telling me that the data set satya car to has zero observation but what is the reason there was zero observation read from the data set okay i might be doing something else wrong so let's see what i'm doing wrong now okay so front drive train front and what is the condition here it says vehicles drive train as front wheel drive okay so i have front rear all so i guess this is exactly what i'm doing wrong i need to select the front value only okay and i don't think that there is anything else because i cannot find any other value into it apart from this all front and rear so at the place of writing into my code because it might be uh, possible that sas is not finding this complete value front wheel drive so i'll remove each and everything i'll just keep front and let's see now what it gives i've just ran it let's go back to log and it says that there was 76 observation read from the data set sas help dot cards the data set satya car 2 has 76 observation and four variables this is exactly okay might be the data is different here or it is also possible that the value which i have given for this ford honda hyundai mercedes benz are not in the correct order so that is also i mean one of the possibility that it did not show me all the you know fields so you can see that i have audi i have chevrolet type sedan suv i will i have not put any filter on type but in order to see chev chevrolet ford honda suzuki toyota i don't have mercedes benz here okay so maybe that i'm missing the records for this mercedes benz because maybe i have not put them in a correct order or the text might have been wrong so see you might see that what are challenges i am facing right now while working with the real data you will also face such challenges or similar kind of challenges because until unless if you are not writing anything in a correct order or in a correct case in sas in inverted code codes you gonna get this error or the challenges with the data mining what you are doing so, so so in order to pull up the correct records or accurate data you need to be sure that what you type in all right now we have just done this example we have just written the similar kind of query now what one changes you can see that i have written keep statement before the where condition but in the given result they have used keep statement after the where condition so it's up to you that where you want to write it so that's all okay guys a quick info if you are looking for an end to end training in saas for data science we at intellipad provide you that course and you can check those details in the description okay guys we've come to the end of the session i hope this session was helpful and informative for you if you have any queries regarding this session please leave a comment below and we'll love to help you out thank you